Oh, no, 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 he was on demon time when it came to Ox. So yeah, me and Ox have to have a discussion. He, he made it. He, he, he made it clear. Last night too? He, yes, and he made it clear. He no, he was in the chat, and Mars made it clear that Ox needs to come to the front of the congregation. He he need to have a word with Ox. Okay, so, well, what's the deal? What what happened? Talk to us. You tell Mr. Ox. I, I was told. I was told. Ah, oh, Sabonis gonna bully Chet. That's what's gonna happen. That's why the Kings are gonna win. That's why they want them in the playoffs. In the playoffs, in a four game yeah, series. So, so, yeah, and, I mean, and then last night, and then last night I said, Chet's uh -huh. not going to get bullied by Sabonis. And you said, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, Chet's not going to get bullied by Sabonis. And then what happened? I saw very little bullying from Sabonis. I'm curious mm. as to why he couldn't bully him. Why, why was that the case? I, why couldn't he bully him? I, I, can't, I can't tell you, Mars. Uh, mm. Honestly, I was I was in the gym yesterday. You know what I'm saying? I was in the gym. Mm. For six, so you six, ain't six, seen Sabonis airballing hooks over Chet. You ain't no, seen honestly, I didn't. I didn't watch any basketball last night. I was on the court myself. I had six hours of practice yesterday, so I can't really say what happened. I'm completely mm. shocked that that happened. I assumed that Demontis was going to bully Chet like he normally does because that's what typically happens. Mm. All season, he's been bullying Chet. So for mm. him to not do it one game, Hey, give him some grace, bro. Give him some so, grace. so, so, Sabonis' double double streak ended last night. If anyone who doesn't know, couldn't even score Damn. ten points. Couldn't even, couldn't, just... even score, couldn't even score ten points on the guy. He I mean, he, he already, he already, already set a record. He said, he yeah, said, yeah, he yeah, good for him. Yeah, good for him. But the guy missed. Really, couldn't even, couldn't even score ten points. Um, I had like yeah, five turnovers. Was he didn't have ten points last night. You tell me he didn't have eight points last night. Eight points. Eight points. Eight points. Yes. Uh, eight points. Eight points. Eight points. I think ten rebounds, five assists, five turnovers, five fouls, negative eighteen. Thoroughly plus outplayed. Are you talking plus minus right now? No, I'm just yeah. letting, I'm letting everyone know. And the reason I brought the plus minus because someone in the comments last night was defending you, being like, "Oh yeah, Sabonis is clearly Smart better." Man. Than these guys. Smart man, yeah. said And then you know what his reasoning was? Because during the game, Sabonis had a positive plus minus. Turns out he ended the game minus eighteen. So unlucky, NY Kareem in the chat. I'm gonna see your comment after this too. But yeah, so Chet thoroughly outplayed him. Not to mention, closed the game. Chet Holmgren was the difference on defense. Absolutely stifled the Kings' offense. Couldn't get anything going toward the rim. He was deflecting passes. He was denying shots to the rim. Davion Mitchell got his shots stuffed. Then he's made he made a couple free throws down the stretch. He actually missed some free throws too, which was unacceptable. But fighting for rebounds, getting extra possessions for his team. Chet Holmgren thoroughly outplayed Demonte Sabonis. Well, well Mars, 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 I never, I never once disagree with the fact that. Uh, that Chet was a hell of a defender. I never said Chet wasn't a great mm -hmm. defender. Mm -hmm. I never said he wasn't going to be great. I said right now he's not strong enough. And from what I've seen, it looked strong enough last night. Yeah. And what I and for both, so from what I've seen for the whole season, he's just not been strong enough. And Demonte Sabonis has his way with him. No diddy. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm checking that out all season. And so I assume the same thing will happen. Now, mm -hmm. if it didn't happen last night, hey. Hats off to Chet. What power yeah, can Chet, you Chet, You know what Chet figured but, out? The same thing the rest of the league figured out. Stand on his he right not, shoulder? He's not going to go to his right hand. So there you go. Chet's, oh, here you go. Right hand, sir. He's still spinning back to his right shoulder to go over his left shoulder, to go with his left hand every time. And Chet's just there. Stand. Oh, airball. Easy. Like, that's all he's doing. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I already knew Chet was better than Sabonis. Chet, and I'm not going to say last game confirmed Chet was better than Sabonis because I'm not going to overreact to one game. But I did tell you guys Chet was better than Sabonis, and he is better than Sabonis. I still um, disagree with him being better than Demontis. I still yeah, thoroughly disagree with that. Yeah, of course, of course. You need to see the playoff series where Chet's going to outplay him again, and then maybe you'll change your mind. I would, I would need to see that. I would definitely yeah. need to see that happen for four games. I don't but think it's unlikely you guys are going to make the playoffs because Sabonis is not very good. But if you do, if we play the Lakers, oh, we could talk about the Lakers too once Ron does mm -hmm. his hosting. <laughs> yeah. What happened with the Lakers last night? I, no, the Lakers lost to the Golden State. Yeah, the, La the Lakers, lost, Lakers yeah. lost. Yeah. Yo, before we go any further, I got to introduce our honored guest. Y'all see him in the top right corner. I got my man Jack rocking with us today. And hey, go ahead and tell the people where you're from, what you do, and where they can find you at. So I'm from West Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, I'm living in New York City right now. Uh, I started a podcast when I got to college. Then uh, here we're doing it full time. And I like to talk about the Boston Celtics, Jason Tatum, but understand the greatness of the NBA right now. And I cover all all sports, but 
you know, you can find me on TikTok, you can find me on Instagram, and those are the two hot spots right now. And obviously, love what you guys are doing on all platforms. So it's an honor to be a part of this, and you know, talk some ball. Absolutely, awesome. my man. We we happy to have you up here. As you can see, you know, it, we don't waste no time. You see, we no, jump straight into not. the stream. I, I wanted to get <laughs> right into it. Right I was I was ready for it. I was ready to start talking about how I agree. I think Chet Chet over Sabonis. Listen, I'm the biggest Gonzaga fan you'll ever find. My mom went mm. to Gonzaga. I'm I'm gonna defend every single Gonzaga alum till the day I die, except for Demontis Sabonis, because I was kind of in favor with Draymond Green last year. But that's just my personal opinion. You know what I'm saying? Oh no, you're not. You said in favor of Draymond Green for yeah. all trying to kill Demontis Sabonis. Listen, I thought Draymond, to a certain degree, was in the right in that in that specific altercation last year in that series and i can't wait if we get golden state sacramento in the play and that's gonna be fun oh yeah you'll like you'll likely see that thing yeah. but i wanted to ask i wanted we to ask the, um i wanted to ask the new guy jack uh, you know yeah. jack right yeah, yeah yeah why did i see you on tiktok saying steph would beat kobe one-on-one -on -one? Thank uh -oh. you, Morris, because that's what I see yesterday. Uh -oh. Yeah, yeah, why, why did I see that? Uh -oh. why, yeah, why did I see that? Hey, hey Jack, you get hot in this room quick. <laughs> I need yeah, to hear I, this, Jack. Yeah, I, I see it now. But I'm wait, but wait, Morris, go further, go further, go further, go further, because then when it came to Steph versus Jason Tatum, you played Jason Tatum, you ain't went on for that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I need to know. Why, why, why did I see that? Why did I see that? Yeah, no, I think for me growing up, when I watched the game of basketball, it was Stephen Curry. It was going home and watching Steph Curry highlights on YouTube. And I think out of anyone, it was him that just taught me the game. I I gained the respect for LeBron and feared LeBron over the years because I'm I'm this Boston Celtics, big Boston guy, right? So I appreciate Jason Tatum, but more importantly, I grew up on Steph, right? Throughout the LeBron dominance of the last 10 years, Boston, I understood you know, the Pierce Garnett years they were in it, right? But there was a period where with Isaiah Thomas or like Avery Bradley as our shooting guard, we didn't really have a chance against LeBron, not a fighting chance. And so me, the bandwagon self that I do, I appreciated and fell in love with Stephen Curry's game. And so I I'm going to be the dude who says Steph is a top five player all time prematurely before he won that fourth championship. And once he got it done, I was like, you know what? There's no doubt. He did that shit by himself. And I'm here saying Steph's better than. I'm going to put Steph top three in this very moment. And that's Ovi over Kobe Bryant. But understanding that when you talk about the game, it's MJ, it's LeBron, it's Steph, and it's Kobe. And you can't leave those four names out. Mm. But in the uh, well, Jack, setting, you, know. you technically can. But we're not going to get to that. That's not where um, I so expected that to go. But so. So long story short, <laughs> you picked Steph because he's your favorite player, basically. No, 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 no. I I love him, but he's the most valuable basketball player this game has ever seen. When you yeah, step in a ever? team, in a team yes, setting, ever. you know, one on one against Kobe. One on one against Kobe, that's popcorn. We love that, but I'm gonna take Steph. I'm gonna say Steph can do it. Hold on, rewind, rewind, rewind. Right, the, most the most valuable I'm player right. ever. Because he shoots the long ball. That's no, no, why no, he's off ball. No, no, no. It's not because of his shooting his ability. It's because of his off-ball movement and the fact that he takes three defenders to actually guard him. More like four, more like five. Everyone's got to guard him, whereas most NBA players, it takes one, maybe two guys in a double team. Yeah. Three guys to guard him. I don't know if it takes three guys to guard him, but the offense... It takes three it eyes, at least. Well, I don't know if it takes That's three one guys. one and a half people. Right, <laughs> three pairs of eyes, boy. <laughs> Focus, boy. Hey, but Jack, but Jack, so so what happens when Kobe gets the ball in this one on one game? Especially, especially because we're from, we play make it, take it. If I score, you're not getting yep. the ball. Yeah. So, yep. so how, how does Steph Curry even get the rock? Like, how does he go about doing? I this? think I think there's a Kobe, right? There's a like a baby faced assassin to Stephen Curry. We remember him in 2015, and he was kind of this scrawny. <laughs> you know, just could shoot the rock, but, you know, mm -hmm. went up against LeBron and beat LeBron in that finals. And then he, you know, after the years with Kevin Durant, he gets hurt. He hits the weight room. And in 2022, it was his best self. And we saw yeah. a different version of Steph, you know, down to one in Boston and just single-handedly beat the Boston Celtics in game four. And then it propelled them to that championship. And, for me, when I saw that version of Steph, I was like, 
he deserves to be in this top five, top three goat conversation, no doubt. But well, we had we, no, Jack, we, Jack, we, Jack, you're, you're telling the truth here. I, I, I feel you in all of that. I just want to know how is Steph Curry going to guard Kobe Bryant? I ain't even on that. No, that's, that's the that's the that's the topic at hand right now. I so think I know how he and that one hard. that one is luck, but that's also trust in just like competition. Anything can happen. <laughs> Steph could get. Well, a Jack, you think you you think you think Steph Curry's a better one on one player than Kobe Bryant? No, 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 no. He just I he's think winning. that in that one on one tournament, Stephen Curry could win that matchup. So I'm not it's, saying it's, that there is no world where I'm trying to say that Kobe Bryant isn't the most talented with the basketball ever, right? So how does Steph beat him one on one then? So let, let, let's just, so what we do what we're doing what we're doing is he's one of the greatest basketball players ever, and he has a chance to compete with another greatest basketball player so, ever. So, so is Jerry West. So is Oscar Robinson. So what that I, I, I disagree I, I, because I, I, I think I Kobe and Steph are in a different true. conversation than all those guys. And the reason why they're in a different conversation is because. Talent. So over the years. Of, so so in terms of talent, you think that Steph Curry, in terms of talent, more talented than Jerry West, more talented than Oscar Robinson. Yes. But you're not sure if he's a better one-on-one -on -one player than because than, because than I Curry. understand I understand the the critic of Stephen Curry. I understand that people say he can't guard, he can't defend, and there's there's times where I'll be like, nah, he gets his steals. But understanding, you know, if you threw Stephen Curry in the '80s or '90s, a lot of people are saying, hey, he's gonna get beat up because he's too small and he's not. No, we don't, don't want to do that. No, no, we ain't talking about the '80s and '90s. We, let's, let's stick with Kobe Bryant and Steph Curry. Let's yeah, stay there. Him. Yeah, let, let, let's stay there. Let's let's stick with Kobe Bryant and Steph Curry because yeah. we're talking about a one-on-one -on -one situation where I'm not even on what Ox talking about making a take it. No, let's give Curry the ball. Let's give Curry the ball back if Bryant makes it. Let's give charity. Bryant We're the, doing charity yeah, ones. Absolutely. Let, let, let's give Bryant the ball. Let's give Bryant the ball if Curry makes it. If we're in a one-on-one -on -one setting where we actually are doing that, how many points do you think Steph Curry scores? I, I think to 11. We plan to eleven. That's that's a if it's not make it take it. That's a back and forth game, and they're just going head to toe. So you don't think he stops? So you don't think Bryant stops him one time? That ain't true, but. It's a back and said, forth game. These are the two greatest basketball players we've ever seen, arguably top five, right? Steph and Kobe. This is where it, this is the popcorn of it all. How is this like Kobe's just gonna win eleven nothing? This is competition. You're I didn't say that. No, no, not no, 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 Ones and they two. make it, make it yeah, one, right? ones and twos. Okay, then Steph has no, I, the advantage. I, I, I want to make it I want. I want to do you. You got to play defense too. So it's it's mano we mano. You got to play defense too. That, not we, game we, give, we giving Steph all these crutches is crazy. Bro. No, we only giving him one, Mars. If, if you if 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 you make it, you give it up. If Bryant makes it, he gives it up. That's it. Ron, to me, I think the score would be like eleven, and I'm it's make it take, Ron. That's all I know. Let's make it take it. I score. I got the ball. You play defense till you stop me. Hey, look, what's the so difference? I think, I, think, I, think the score, I think the score would be about probably Ox, 11, 7, 11, 8. 11, Ox, 8. So, Ox, what's the difference? So, Ox, what's the difference if I make it and I give it up as opposed to making it, taking it? I'm going to miss it. We just don't do I'm it. Still, I'm still Yeah, but miss if you miss shots, that's on you. So, you play defense because you yeah. messed up. Not because, we, hey, I scored, but you got to get the ball anyway. Do that. Nah. Just make it take it. I, you are, you are, you are, so you, you've you never are, played. Bro, who played one on one where it's not make it take it? What are you talking yeah, about? Right. That's that's right. I don't. I, it's make it make it take it. Yeah, I, 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 I got I got eleven. I got eleven, eleven, eight, eleven, seven. Call eleven, eight. Call. I think. What's your, 11, cr what's your criteria? What's your criteria for Kobe? For not not for Kobe Bryant for for. Steph being that good of a one-on-one -on -one player to actually challenge Kobe Bryant as a one-on-one. Right, player. right. Quick though, before we answer that, chill. I just want to hear what you guys' score is. You chill, Mars and Jack. I think he beats him eleven four, maybe eleven five. Okay, Mars. Eleven six. Eleven six. Eleven six. Eleven six. Seven somewhere in that range. Jack. Uh, eleven six, Steph, because two is more than one. Two is more than one, but two is more than one. especially in a non make it take it situation. I think make it take it, you have the argument for the Kobe Bryant dominance and he just wins 11 nothing. But at the same time, 
appreciating the greatness of what Stephen Curry presents, no matter what situations it is, what situation it is in, he is going to compete and it's going to be a game. Steph and Kobe are going to go head to toe. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Mm. I do want to say though, although I don't have Steph, if Steph get to shoot step back threes and he's in one of those modes, like what well, we've been right. If we being honest, Rod, ain't no defense for a guy who can crack the long ball off the dribble at 30 feet. Ain't no defense for that. I don't care how good you are as a defender. A dude that can crack the long ball at 25 feet off the bounce accurately, there's really nothing that you could do with that. Nothing. That's why That's why I said 11. Hey, y'all said 11, 4, 11, 6, and stuff. I, 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 I said 11, 6, or 7. I'm like 1.0. Yeah. Yeah. And, and 11, also, 11. Too, also, too, we talking about make it, take it. Okay, what if Steph gets the ball and he's feeling himself? What if Steph watches his New York a, a, in the garden, his performance where he scored 55? And he's like, right. you know what? We acting like Steph I'm, I'm, is a nobody I'm, that can't guard. No, we're not, no, 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 no. Right. We're not doing that. No, we're not. What we're doing is, is you're dismissing how good Kobe Bryant was as a one-on-one -on -one defender. Okay. He wasn't that good as an off-ball defender, but you're, com you're confusing how good he was, not only as a one-on-one -on -one defender, but how much he competed. And I can't see him getting dominated by Steph Curry. No the way. The idea it's that. not happening. No. The idea that Kobe Bryant, so you're saying the idea that Kobe Bryant, regardless of the superstar when he was guarding them, regardless if it was a LeBron or any of those guys, Tim Duncan, right. he always found a way to match up in that one on one and you couldn't get by him. It's not that he got, it's not that he found a way to match up. Cause I mean, just like any other player, you know, you get roasted from time to time, but there's gonna be a level of competition that you gotta meet. And I feel like in a one on one, we're in a five on five, we're not going up and down. We're in a one on one right in this half court. It's you and me. There's a level of competition that you have to have. And Bryant has that. And looking at Steph Curry, studying him, knowing what he likes to do, knowing where he likes to be, knowing what kind of shots he likes to shoot. Kobe is not just going to let this dude get whatever he wants, whenever he wants, even though it's hard to defend a guy, almost impossible to defend a guy shooting off the bounce from 25 feet. I can see Kobe Bryant being a little bit more physical with him. I can see Kobe Bryant sitting on his left hand a little bit, sitting on his right hand a little bit more. I can see Kobe Bryant making him get downhill a little bit more so he could get him in the paint and try to try to get Steph Curry to try to shoot over the top of him and smacking it back in his face. I can see him doing stuff like that. I can see him getting Kobe Bryant. I can see Kobe Bryant making him more uncomfortable 22 to 25 feet away from the basket. That's why I'm thinking to myself, all of these stuff, all of these things, I think Kobe, I, I don't think that Steph has more answers for Bryant than Bryant has for him. I got to ask you guys. So they're playing ones. And let's let's say this make a take it. Mm -hmm. In a seven-game series, how many games does Steph win? We still – we still so, so, like, is it three dribbles? Is it max? Is it – No, max? Like, no three, like, dribbles, three dribbles, Steph has no chance, bro. No, right. that's why I'm also exactly. like, we go, we go set the ground rules. If we're doing three dribbles, I'm sorry. I don't think Steph's winning the game. It's no. kind of it's, Steph has it's, zero it's, chance. it's ugly for it's Steph either way it goes, but if Steph has point. unlimited dribbles, Kobe's at Steph's mercy. As much as I hate to yeah, say he it, let Steph dribble around as long as he wants. I you mean, see what I'm saying? Like it's but at the same time, if Kobe had unlimited dribbles, it's like I'm going to dribble you to death to like get in the post and right. just really which is why no one plays dribbles. ones with unlimited dribbles. But I mean three, three dribbles, though. We'll go three dribbles. I think I'm doing dribbles. Dribbles. I'm, 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 I'm doing spots. We're doing, we're doing spots. So we're doing, we're doing right. spots. three dribbles. Three dribbles. We'll, we'll, we'll go to top three spots. Wing, uh, wing, top, wing. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Steph can Steph can lock himself into a game. I Again? doubt it, but he can. He can lock himself I into. I just game. don't like this three dribbles thing, man. Check up. That's all I'm thinking. Yeah, check up. Put the ball on the court. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. Check up. Let's rock. All this chill. All right. Chill. You don't like three dribbles. Oh man, you only get three dribbles and you gotta go to this spot. Give him the ball. Let's rock one on one. You and me. Chill. I, un unlimited dribbles is cool. And like we'd be doing this like with our kids and stuff too. Unlimited right. dribbles is cool, but like I was just telling them yesterday, you can't guard nobody it's, no matter what. Yeah, it's unrealistic. It's, you know, yeah. you're not gonna have to stay in front of someone for 26 dribbles. Like it's, you're never it's gonna just impossible. Well, I mean, we, 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 play, we that, playing ball, so nobody just like you know what I'm saying. That's what I'm talking I'm, about. I'm we're not yeah, Steph Curry's I'm, not gonna I'm, be I'm throwing the ball between his legs eight, nine, ten, twelve times. No. He's, he's going to try to get to his spot. And that's my job as a defender to beat him to that spot. It's my job as a defender to get him off his rhythm. So I don't want to throw more. I don't want to throw more of a monkey wrench in the game when going, all right, you only got three dribbles to do this. Wait a minute. Come on, man. Pick the ball. Let's, <laughs> we, not, let's not do the three dribbles thing. Yeah, come on, man. Remember, we were just talking about Paul George the other day, though, because it, it discredits good defense. 
what's his name guarded Paul George uh Mobley he guarded Paul George good for 10 seconds but it's right. like yo when you when you have to guard somebody for 18 seconds you're you're gonna end up on the floor I'm gonna put it that way you're you're gonna end up cooked you're not doing that. That was, a, that yeah, was a complete mismatch, though. That's Paul George versus Evan Mobley. We're talking about two guards. Was it though? You know, you know, was it? Yes, yeah, so that's a mismatch. Too. As much as, as good as Evan Mobley is on defense, that's a mismatch. But Kobe, Kobe, and, and mm. Steph, we don't I mean, need six we don't need six versus six two. Versus, is kind of a mismatch too, but I mean, I mean, yeah, but I'm so, I'm talking about as far as like speed, ability, move, agility, you know, mobility, all of that. Like, I, it's it is a mismatch when you tend to block a plus. I think Steph's more closer to six six four than six two. He's like yeah. six three. So I think either, either way, either way, I understand what you're saying. It is a mismatch, especially if he gets to back him down and stuff. But but yeah, see, we we can do like a, a time limit, like say let's say you got 12 seconds or something, you know what I'm saying? Right. But three dribbles, yeah. I don't, it, I don't it like it would that. be even less than that, it'd be seven seconds. Seven seconds, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, That's I cool. mean, however, however, I just don't like the three dribbles thing in this right now. I want to keep it right. straight one on one, you know. Three dribbles is like an efficient way to play one on one when you're actually playing one on one unlimited and just doing it the right way, like that's how you measure that's the best way to measure the one-on-one debate that we're having right now you guys do know though when these guys play one-on-one they play three dribbles yeah i don't yeah no it's or, or they play or they play short court. Court. or they play we're short trying court. to we're trying to debate who would win in that situation steph versus kobe and i feel like three dribbles just <laughs> limits the situation it it, it, it makes one you know sidestep dribble and then kobe's on that and steph's cooked but if you have Steph trying to actually get a bucket in a like this is do or die game to eleven, every bucket matters. I think give these guys every dribble they want. You give someone you give someone the whole the whole court, like the whole half court, and unlimited dribbles with no time restraints. Everyone's just gonna score every time. No, they're no, not. That's not, that's not no, how it works. Not, hey, no, 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 exactly no, you tell them no, they take as long not, as they not. They're not just you can't nobody, 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 not nobody plays nobody plays one on one like that. Like nobody, nobody just sit, nobody mm-hmm. just dribbles all around the court and does that. Nobody does. I'm that. not I've saying dribble around the whole court. court. I'm saying if you have the option to have all that space, like we understand okay. why offense today in the NBA is so hard to stop because there's all right. that space. Now take right. away every other help defender and your teammates, right. and right. you say there's no shot clock. Right. No one's gonna stay in front of anyone. You that's, can't stay in front of someone for that. I'm, I'm, I'm with Morris on this 100. percent Like like I, I, there's well, a reason the respect, NBA players. I just disagree, bro. I just disagree. I play one on one all my life, and nobody does that. So all right. So what what I'm saying is, with all due respect, in three dribbles you can guard me. And you could guard me. You could guard me fairly well. And you could guard me fairly well. No, just hear me. Hear me out. You could guard me fairly well. But I'm too fast for you. If we go anything beyond three dribbles, I, I'm just. I'm. It's gonna. Ryan, be, you know what you're not talking about. I don't care, Ryan. I don't even. And that's not all respect. I'm just telling the truth. What I'm saying is, it's, 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 it's going for me. That's the same way. But we even, played. I, I played one on one all my life. I played less, less, off, less often with three dribbles. And no matter what, it's it, when you play one on one, nobody's just dribbling all around the court. For for 30, 40 seconds when you when you're playing ball, you're trying to score. And I just disagree. Like I don't I don't subscribe to the to the to the thought like, oh, nobody can stay in front of anybody. But we're playing ball. It's just I don't for me, my experiences might be different than your experiences, your experiences, your experiences, your experiences. So I'm just thinking from my brain. I don't, hey, we don't need the three dribbles. I'm, I'm not well, saying uh, people are just unless, dribble unless that's what we're doing. If we're, if we're playing if three dribbles, mean, that's fine. Yeah. If we're playing one on one. Nobody's just gonna dribble all around, bro. Like that's and, nobody does and, that, bro. And, and I don't even think that's what I implied. But excuse me, I I'm, well, I'm more so talking. Here's the, about here's, 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 here's the thing, too. Here's the thing, too, Mars, that you got to remember, Ron. When we when we square up and we play one on one, where are you starting from? Probably the top of the key. You're trying to get as close to the basket as possible. So you're not gonna do all of this going all around here, going all around. You're gonna square up with me, and you're gonna try to get as close to the basket. As possible, you're not going 22 feet away from the basket and then squaring up on me again. You're not going all the way over here with another three dribbles and squaring up on me again. You're going to square up on me right from the beginning at the top of the key or maybe even in the middle. And you're trying to get to the basket. That's the goal to either get to your mid range, to get to whatever spot you're trying to get to, to get to the basket. You're trying to do that. You don't need the entire court to do that. That's not what you're trying to do. So did you guys, it's, did it's, you guys it's listen not, to what I said? Like, are you you guys acting like I said he's just going to dribble for two minutes, waiting for Kobe to just get bored of guarding him? I never even implied that what was what was happening. I'm saying you give someone a whole court of space and you tell them, hey, if you drive, if you try drive and they cut you off and you can reset the play and then reset your drive, 
eventually you're gonna get an opportunity to score. You're gonna get I'm an open shot. Yeah, but basketball. Mark, people, All I'm Mark, saying people, is, people if you Mark, take Mark, away the, if you, people, either you if give you someone a time off, restraint of seven seconds, twelve seconds, or you give them a dribble limit. Because if you give an offensive player as many options to attack as they can. Mm-hmm. They are going it's, to eventually get an open look. That's yes, I, that's no, that, I'm not saying they're going to dribble Mark, around like an eight year old waiting for someone to stop guarding them. I never even implied that, but I'm saying if you right. give them as many opportunities to attack, right. eventually they're going to either they're going to get a good look, which right. they might miss, right. or you're going to or you're going to end up giving up a score because you're not giving them an opportunity to get a stop unless right. they finally put the shot up. But if they're not forced to put up a shot. What are but you Morris, doing? No, but That's still, Morris, nobody, nobody's doing that, Morris. When you go, if I go and I get cut off and I'm going to a counter move, I'm not going to stop and then dribble all the way back up. Yeah, if exactly. I that, if you, you give someone off, unlimited counters, no, just, then what? Just listen, just listen, just listen, Morris. If I go there, I'm going to... I, what I'm telling you what I know from playing one-on-one basketball. If you go... I'm going here and I'm going to spin off. I'm not going to, I'm not going to just not take a contested shot because I got all day. I'm going to shoot the ball. Like, nobody, nobody's waiting for a perfect shot. And that, that's just, that doesn't happen, no? Now, you Mark, go, I, I cross. I might cross over if you beat me to the spot. Now I might go behind the back. And I might spin here, but I'm not gonna dribble back up. I'm gonna shoot. I'm, I'm gonna shoot the contestant. And shot. I'm saying you give someone now, unlimited. And then, and then, and then on top of that, no matter like so to Ron's point, even if you're playing somebody faster than you, which I've been doing forever, I don't. I'm not just like oh, I only need three dribbles because you're gonna get you're gonna beat me. That's how you learn how to play basketball. That's how you learn how to play defense. I'm playing somebody faster than you, so I take a step off when they pull up. I try to contest the shot to the best of my ability. That's just how basketball is, but nobody nobody plays like that. I don't. I mean, I, well, I, let me not say nobody plays because I don't know who you guys are playing against. But in in, in my experience, I played against guys faster than Ron, and I don't need three dribbles. I take a step back and we play basketball. Simple, bro. Just, now, Mars. Now, 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 Mars. I, to to your point, to counter your point, you're also taking up the psychological advantage. So, like you just said, if I beat you to the spot, this is the spot you're trying to get to. I beat you to that spot. You don't get to that spot. You come back out. You get to another spot. I beat you to that spot. If I keep beating you to these spots, eventually, psychologically, you're going to be like, well, damn, how am I going to be able to score against this guy? Because remember, you don't have any teammates out here to bail you out. You don't have anybody out here to help you. It's just you and me. That's it. So this spot that you get to, now you're going to start throwing up bad shots because I've basically taken you out of what your game is. Kobe but chill, think about who we're talking about, yeah, though. We're talking, we, we're talking about Steph Curry. Played, and, 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 and this is what That's I'm talking about. Kobe, Kobe can beat Steph on two moves. He can beat Steph to the spot, and Steph can try to step back, and Kobe can contest that. Right. But if Steph gets two more dribbles with the step back and can now do a pump fake, crossover, right. and then snatch back this way, Kobe's right. cooked. Like, I love that, Kobe. That's what I'm but about nobody's the best in NBA can guard We're him. not talking about me going out there with unlimited. Right. I, I'm not gonna score when that you could give me unlimited dribbles against someone with three dribbles. I'll get cooked. That's fine. You got Steph Curry, so Steph Curry can jab, he can go. Kobe's gonna slide with him. Steph step mm-hmm. back, then he's gonna hezzy, then he can still drive again. Kobe's gotta slide with him again. Then Steph can spin off and get to a layup. Yeah, he's like, got to play defense. That's, exactly. That's not yes. possible for anyone to guard. You can't give Steph Curry unlimited time and unlimited dribbles. There's a reason NBA players either run shot clock or three dribbles because none of them are a in the NBA. You're never gonna. You're very rarely gonna get the opportunity to go James Harden and go hey, tween, 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 step back. Get as many right. dribbles as you want. And we've and seen B, how unstoppable help, that was. And B, help defense is going to come. That's why when NBA players do ones, they either do shot clock, seven seconds, or they do three dribbles. Because none of them are going to be able to stay with that array of counters that NBA players have in their arsenal. Because it's impossible to stay with someone if you're going to give them as many dribbles and as much time as they want. Me? Yeah, sure. Kindergarten kids, cool. Give them as many dribbles as you want. High school kids, <laughs> cool, whatever. Actual NBA guys, right. you aren't going to stay in front of them for that many moves. And I'm not saying right. they're going to dribble 25 seconds or oh, size up all of it. No, but they're going to make a, attacking moves. You stay right. with one, they're going to they're going to step back. Then, oh, they has the, then they're going to go, then they're going to go tween, then they're going to snap. Like, you can't stay with everything. Right. That's why people play three dribbles and that's why they do shot clock. We Which understand why these NBA guys do that. Well, but, 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 but I mean, saying that is like saying that's not that's not what they are in certain situations. Yes, we might be working on that. We might be working on three dribbles. Yes, we might be working on playing quick. But every time these guys play one, it's not just three dribbles or certain shot clock. They're playing one on one basketball. So yes, in situational times, yeah, we play. We might play three dribbles. Yeah, they might they might do uh seven seconds or less. But a lot of times when you're just in the gym, you don't need that. You know so. You know, it's, it's a situation. Like, so, well, so I'm, I'm not with the NBA I'm not, guys, but I'm, I'm not like saying five percent sure they do shot clock most. Of well, I've been I, okay. So yeah, I've been so in the gym I'll, with these NBA guys. I, I've been in the gym with Gus Armstead and 
in, in Kevin Kevin Martin, uh, 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 Matt Barnes, you know, uh, Dante Green, all these guys. We've been I've been in the gym with these dudes, and this they're not just playing three dribbles every time. They're not just playing unlimited shot clock. When it's checked up, we're just playing ball, and you got to go. You know what I'm saying? So you're right. I'm not saying I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong because a lot of times they do do situational things, but a lot of times it's just check up. Let's play ball. That's all I'm saying. And a lot, and a lot of these guys, to, to your point, Miles, when you talked about counters. A lot of these guys already have the mentality of the spot that they want to get to. And they're not prepared. They're not prepared for a bunch of different counters. Off the strength that a guy like Kobe Bryant, who plays defense the way he does, and is able to play defense for long stretches, and to go up against a guy like Steph Curry, where he's able to beat him to a spot here, and then able to beat him to a spot there. Now, those counters that he has, those two or three counters, well, maybe I've slowed them down. And now he's got to stick to this one thing that I want him to stick to, which is playing further away from the basket, which is shooting the long ball. So, and I'm sitting on that too. And I'm sitting on that even, I'm sitting on that. So now we're talking about something completely different with Kobe Bryant. Because now when he gets the ball back, Steph Curry's used all his energy trying to score on, trying to score on Kobe Bryant. I don't think Kobe Bryant's going to have as difficult a time trying to score against Steph Curry. You, oh, you, guys, I, do, women, but yeah. you, you guys do know why three dribbles is actually a thing, right? No, why is it a thing? It, because it actually forces you to work on your skill. If you can score in three dribbles, then you can score in ten dribbles. If you can score in one dribble, you can score in three dribbles. Um, but furthermore, though, the reason why it's such a big thing is because in a game, you're never going to get – rarely, rarely are you going to get 15 dribbles to score. You got it like what I was taught by all the pros I used to train with. Get off the ball. If you can score in three dribbles, you can score in any set. You three dribbles max is what it's going to take for you to get to your spot. You're going to get two. You got two dribbles to blow by somebody. You got one dribble to make a counter. If you can't score from there, then you're just not going to be a successful one on one play. That's so what it, it maximizes your Jalen Green this year. Ime Udoka said to Jalen Green, it, he said when he first came in, it takes you 10 dribbles to score. Midway through the season, it was taking you five dribbles. Now you can get now you can get to a score in two or three dribbles. That's what that's you maximize your efficiency and your effectiveness if you can score with less dribbles. I I, I just said not everyone's James Harden. You're not gonna you're not gonna get that opportunity, especially in the NBA, which these guys are training for, because help defense is gonna come, guys are gonna shade over to your side, all of those extra things. That's why you gotta be able to get to a spot quickly, which is why they play shot clock, or in minimal dribbles, which is why they do three dribbles. That's why, and if NBA players are in their own time doing unlimited dribbles, unlimited shot clock for, for vibes, sure. But I'm 99.9% .9 sure if they're working on their game in the offseason, playing ones, there's either a shot clock or they're playing dribbles. Or they're doing both. I'm 99% sure. But I, once again, I could be wrong. And if that's me being off on this, fine. I'm still not going to change my mind. I'll just be ignorant. I'm not going to lie. I'll just be ignorant. <laughs> Yo, Jack. So the shot clock's at seven. Let's get let, hey, let's let's finally put it into this Kobe step thing. The shot clock's at seven. If it's at seven and not like twelve or fifteen, I think that favors Kobe in this situation a lot more. But at the same time, I still think Steph Curry is good enough to beat you with two or three dribbles. He can beat you with one dribble or no dribbles. He could hit you with a uh uh, and then Kobe's gonna be there. I'm going to say if it's a seven game series and it's a seven second shot clock, I'll say because of the series aspect of it, I'll take Steph in a best of seven series. I'll say four, three. All right. Mav Don believes you. He said uh, Steph destroys Kobe. So I'm there assuming he think he got Kobe. You got some love in the chat. I, I think he got Kobe <laughs> winning one game and Steph winning four. But. All right, y'all. Uh, I got a few different super chats. It's a lot of people in here. I wanna, I wanna salute to everybody that's here watching this episode with us. Go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't. Shout out to all of our new members. If you haven't subscribed yet, it's no better time than now. We will be on playback tonight too, and it will be the Dallas Mavericks versus the Miami Heat. We got a good game tonight. This game has definitely has playoff implications. Uh, it will be Dub and JD, so you tap in and catch their vibes tonight on playback. That game will be on at. 7.15? 7.15 Eastern time. So y'all y'all be sure to tap in. Also, that QR code right below Ox. Scan that QR code and go to www.playerschoicemerch.com. Grab you something nice and grab your girlfriend something nice too or your boyfriend. All right, y'all. Uh, it was a lot of good games last night. So before we get into the standings and all of that stuff, we talked about the Kings and uh, <laughs> their loss last night, but there was some other games too. Is it anything that jumped out to you guys specifically? 
the Golden State Warriors shooting the way that they did last night. Good luck doing that for the rest of the season. Like a lot of people see that and they like, yo, the Warriors are back. Just so we clear. God they- damn, you were about I was about to say that. <laughs> 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 I was literally going to be like, Golden State's going to the finals. Here we go. See? Uh, uh, hold on, though, Jack. Do you sincerely believe that, or are you just high off last night's uh, I'm, performance? I'm, I'm definitely not high off of last night's performance. I'm going to say that Golden State has the second best chance to go to the NBA finals. Whoa. In the go. Western Conference. Here we go. I hold told on, wait, you, wait, boss. Wait, 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 wait. What did I tell you, boss? Wait, 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 you see the title of the show, who's the best in the West? That's the Dion of Steph, fans. That's what I realized. Hey, we, 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 we will get into, we'll get into who we think is the best teams in the West. Yeah. I got to hear everybody's top four in terms of who, who, who's the best contender to go to the championship. But Jack, before, before we hear your other four and get into that, you have Golden State as the second best team in the West, essentially, or they have the second best odds. I think they are the biggest threat to Denver. I think Denver cruises. Nobody stops Denver. If there's a team that can make a run and actually get to the finals, it's Golden State. And the reason I say that is because if everything kind of happens the way it should happen, which is a very rare situation, but who the hell knows? Golden State wins their first play-in. Then they win their second play-in. And if Minnesota wins tonight and gets the one seed, I'm taking Golden State in a seven-game series against Minnesota. Against Denver, that's – I'd rather see Denver towards the fi- Western Conference Finals just because anything can happen then. I get the point of, like, wanting to see a team early because everyone's fresh, but I think if Golden State plays Minnesota in round one and then they got to play a beat-up Clippers or Mavericks, anything can happen. Jack, can you take your fan hat off just for a second? That's all yes. I, I, want you to do. I want you to take your fan hat off for a second. Yes. Is it realistic to think that the Golden State Warriors missed the playoffs? As in, yes, of course, of course, yes. So, right, we're talking about the Golden State Warriors yes. potentially going to the NBA Finals. They got to make the playoffs first. I think, I think my point is to say how good Denver is, but also to say that Golden State's roster – And when I look at it and when I watch them last night and when I've watched them throughout this kind of like month and a half, I'm like, how is this team not second in the West right now and cruising to the NBA finals or at least the Western Conference finals? It's because of what they had to go through at the start of the year. And with Draymond Green being out and all that crap they went through to the point where they are now in the 10 seed and they have to make a run. And if there's anyone I'm going to put my faith into, it's the Golden State Warriors. At this point of the season, you're going to put your faith in the Golden State Warriors. Okay, sure, they've won nine of their last ten. Yes. But Klay Thompson mm. has basically been a shell of himself the majority of the season. In addition to him being that, Wiggins has has been basically non-existent throughout the season. Pods looks like he can play from time to time. Jackson also looks like he can play from time to time. Yes. Steve Kerr has shot you guys in the foot more than once, more than twice, more than three times. But you've actually put some things together over these last nine, 10 games, all of that to say that you have to see the Lakers who basically, when Anthony Davis is in the lineup, dominate you guys. Which means that if you have to play the Lakers with Anthony Davis, you're out. How did that work with you getting to the finals? You know, I really pray that the Los Angeles Lakers- Pray now. We're praying now. That's I'm praying. Pray. I am praying that the Los Angeles Lakers get mm-hmm. to- the eight seed before the season ends, which with a loss last night, it don't help them, but I, I believe it's there's still a possibility for it. Can Los Angeles get the seven seed for the love? Can Phoenix get the six seed? The, the Pelicans, get the hell out of here. Sacramento, you're done. I don't want to see that. I want to see Kevin Durant in the playoffs. I want to see LeBron James in the playoffs, and I want to see Steph Curry in the playoffs because if they are the sixth, seventh, and eighth seed, one, two, and three. You better watch out. Do you think we it's live, a world? We where live in one, 2018. Okay, oh, never mind. Okay. You, <laughs> does anybody think it's a world where the one, two, and three seed all get bounced? I don't think Denver loses, but I do think if Phoenix has to play Oklahoma City, that's a match made in heaven for Kevin Durant, and he's going to take advantage of that situation. I don't think Oklahoma City has lost to Phoenix this year. One game. I think they beat them every. Why time is that a play. match made in heaven for Kevin Durant? Right. Revenge. It's all about legacies nowadays. Revenge for what? He the one who left them. I they, get they, it. They, they, but they Kevin Durant, 
Kevin Durant makes himself kind of the victim in many ways in, in his head. And he's going into that matchup saying, if I beat Oklahoma City and they're this, you know, new beloved, all these up and coming SGA, Chet Holmgren, right? And and I send them back home in the first round after they have such a great OK season, they're running to make the one seed. You know what I'm saying? They've had a hell of a regular season. Imagine if Phoenix led by Kevin Durant, who has done absolutely nothing and underperformed all season long, bounce them in the first round did you say kevin durant has done nothing as in under no phoenix phoenix, oh, phoenix, phoenix has done nothing and underperformed okay. all season long kevin okay. durant is the only reason why phoenix is phoenix right. and why i believe in phoenix mm -hmm. y'all don't think that's a mismatch for katie katie's a mismatch for everybody it's not like it's a mismatch it's not, it's not like kd <laughs> is going to run up on denver and they're going to shut the door on him i mean he's a mismatch for everybody there's nobody that that's standing in front of kd there's nobody that's slowing kd down i don't think that's the issue the issue is, who are they gonna? Who are they gonna stop? Yeah. Phoenix altogether. You're right. That's they, can't, they cannot play defense. They cannot play defense, and that's not a recipe to go to the finals whatsoever. You know. And who are Golden State gonna slow down? Since we're on that subject, <laughs> that defense was good when Draymond. Hey, they're getting better. You know, Draymond leading the roles. It's all right. I think. Mm -hmm. I think Golden State can compete against Minnesota and OKC more than they can compete against Denver, and I'll keep it at that. Fellas, back to last night's games, though. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run off some scores, <laughs> tell you guys what happened a little bit last night. At any moment in time, if you want to talk about any of these games, mm -hmm. feel free to. All right, the first game that we had was, well, Luca. Luca did what Luca typically does. He put on a master class. Uh, he had 39 points, 12 rebounds, 10 assists, and they beat the Charlotte Hornets, 130 to 104. And this puts the Mavs, well, the Mavs have officially solidified a playoff spot. So they won't be in the play-in. Mm -hmm. And right now they're the fifth seed. Yep. As stands. Next I'm game. Gonna, I've seen oh, the up, 21 ahead, in the first quarter, so I ain't even bothered to watch the game. Right. Be honest. I, I, Mars, I, 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 I watched the first quarter. <laughs> yeah, I've seen the up 21 in the first oh quarter. I was like, okay, yeah, GG's game over. On to the next. Am I nuts to think that Luca's gonna turn Gaff. He's gonna turn Gafford into an all-star. I'm I'm going on record saying that. What DeAndre Jordan type all star? Yes. He's gonna turn Gafford into an all-star. Gafford's good stop? though, chill. With, with I, ain't saying that, I, ain't saying, I ain't saying I ain't saying that he ain't good. He's even better with Luca though. Yeah. But do you yeah. know how hard it's gonna be to make the all-star game in the front court? Cat, hey. Rudy, <laughs> Jokic, Chet, Zion, uh, KD counsels the front court, AD, Sabonis. Sangoon, Wemby, Jaron Jackson, Larry Martin. Yeah, that's, that's rough. Like, and, Darren Gafford might be great, but, but making and, and, an all star team is going to be that right. impossible. With that, and with that, Rudy being Gobert, said, Mars, number one seed. Rudy, right. I I no, I'm and, saying, I'm saying, can he make it under the Rudy Gobert at number one seed? Hmm. I don't think He's, so. That's going to be a robbery of whoever doesn't make it. I, I, but he so might. Bonus, I don't know. He so, might bonus got robbed this year, let somebody tell it. But now that I'm thinking back on it, it should have been checked. Of course, I mean, hey, hey people don't know. Chet should have been an all star over. Like y'all gotta stop. Y'all gotta stop with that drinking tequila, yeah, man. Wemby should have been an all star too, but they didn't want to give a rookie an all star selection, so that's cool. Tim Duncan made the all star team as a rookie, yeah, but they didn't want to do it. The last one he did it was Blake Griffin, they didn't want to do it. That's cool. Well, right, Wemby's not as good as Tim Duncan, okay. Should have been an all star, but oh well. Who on comes to off the off, next game, who comes Ruff, off the all star team, Wemby? Um, if, if Wemby's on it, who comes off, Cat? Paul George, Cat, one of them. Mm. Anthony Davis. Paul George or Cat, one of them. <laughs> All right, on to the next game, y'all. We had the Pistons playing in Philadelphia against the Sixers. And surprisingly, Joel Embiid played 36 minutes. Ramping them up. In 36 minutes. Ramping them up. He had 37 points, 11 rebounds. Ramping them up. Eight assists, three steals. Ramping them up. Two blocks. Yep. Five turnovers, though. Yep. How are we feeling about this? And he shot efficiently as well. Yeah, now, I, 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 I watched part of that game. I did I did watch part of that game. I was watching Embiid. He's still yeah. not close in terms of endurance. He's gassed. You can see it. He's gassed. <laughs> but is he, is he playing, close, Mars? Is he close, no. Mars? And also, there was a scare. I'm just going to put out there for anyone who didn't watch the game. There was oh. a scare. He, he, did, he, did, he did slip. His knee buckled a little bit. He came out of the game, came back in. It's a good sign he came back in. It's against the Pistons. He came back in. That means he was good right. to go. But there was a scare. Just putting anyone anyone on notice who didn't know. There was a scare. Right. He did, he I did didn't know that. his knee a little bit. I'm trying Yo. to save it from going out of bounds. 
Mars, so, if I'm Nick Nurse yeah. and we get a scare against the Pistons, you yanking them? Your asshole. Get it, get out the arena. We'll, we'll yeah, get to the Yankees too, but get it out did, the arena. It did, it did look scary. Like, I'm gonna be honest, watching it, he tried to save the ball from going out of bounds, so like he tried to stop his whole momentum, slipped, his knee buckled a little bit, he fell down, wow. came out of the game. It didn't look great, but then he came <laughs> back in and continued business as usual. So I, I guess it's okay. Which is, I take it as a, maybe it's a right. positive sign that his knee could take that kind of stress and nothing, nothing scary happens. So mm. there's that. But yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Embiid's different. I don't know what to. Embiid's different. That's a, the that's things a ve- I'm seeing him do is oh my god, he's ridiculous. Mm. That's a very good sign, and you can't take him out after that. That's a mental thing. You can't you can't let him start being scared about his knee. You got to play. If you're not hurt, keep playing ball. Joel is right. fine. Joel is ready to go. He's good. And the only thing is, got to get that that um that game, get back in game shape. Keep playing, keep playing him thirty plus minutes a game. Get get his wind, get his lungs back opened up. Joel is fine. That knee is a okay. This you know is good. I'm happy, right. I'm happy to see Joel back. He played thirty. What do you say? Thirty six minutes. Thirty six. Thirty six minutes. Joel, 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 Joel straight, bro. I I think what Nick Nurse is doing right now. He's playing Joel and be back in shape. You know, you can get yeah. back in shape like in practice, running and stuff like that. How else like you going to do it, Ron? How else you going to do it, though? Yeah, you, get, you can only get game shape by playing games. You can only That's it. You can't games. do it no other way. We can. I can run wind sprints and practice all day, get on a bike and get on a track. None of that, though. None of that matters unless I actually get on the floor and get beat up and get pushed around and get to my game. That's the only way I'm going to get better. That's the only way I'm going to get in game shape. Mars, how did he look, though? Like, was he sluggish? Was he slow? Was he... No, you could just see after, like... a. Certain amount of minutes that he starts hovering around the three point line, he's not really getting up the court defensively, he's just gonna stay in the lane. Like, you could just see, like, the the not the effort, but like the movement gets restricted majorly, and he's just doing very few things. But then he'll get the ball and he'll just give Jalen to run a bucket anyway. But like, just the other things in terms of how well he's moving around the court, you can see he's gassed. If he doesn't have the ball, yeah. his hands are on his knees. Like those type of things, and I mean, it's to be expected. For me, I think he'll play himself into shape at some point. Maybe, maybe not by the playing. Maybe he'll still be a bit gassed by the playing. But if they make the first round, midway through the first round, I think he'll be all right. The turnovers is where you can see there's rust. He's hmm. turning the ball over like crazy. And why is that, Mars? Probably because he's gassed. When you're tired, you tend to make mistakes. Right. Yeah. That's when you turn the ball yeah. over. That's that's where that's where it's like okay, we got to lock in on the turnovers because right. he had he had like five last night when he played Memphis. I think he had like seven. Right, and then his first game back, I know he had like six. Right. So he's been turning the ball over like crazy since he's been. And you, up. and you can bet your bottom dollar after the game he's on that bike. Oh, for sure, he's doing you, everything. You can, he be, you can bet your bottom dollar after he, after he plays thirty six minutes, he got to get those miles in on the bike. For keep sure. that knee warm. That's fair. Sure, keep, keep, that keep the knee warm. Get some and extra extra gas, extra cardio. Pause. Everything that you said, everything that you said, I'm digging it. If we had another month. If we had another month, I'd be all in with you. The fact that we we have this limited a time, and he's going to get different looks thrown at him. Not only is he going to get different looks thrown at him, teams are going to throw different looks at his crew. And the fact that the mistakes that he makes when he gets gassed, he wouldn't be that gassed if I had another month. And I think mentally he would definitely be more prepared if he had more time. The fact that he doesn't have as much time, that's where I think the issue is. I don't think his game is a question. It's not like he's automatically just going to – I don't know how to make a mid-range jump shot. I don't know how to pass out of the double team. I don't know how to score around the rim. I don't know how to protect the rim. He still doesn't have that lift that he had. He still doesn't finish around the basket where he's dunking the ball like he was in January or in December. That's still not there yet. But if we had another month, I'd be all, I, I'd be with you. But I can't see it. Not yet. Yo, I got a couple questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jack, I want to ask how you feel about MB. But before I ask you that, before I get your answer, I just want to uh, acknowledge that the chat is giving Ox his flowers. Uh, they're, they're calling him Ostradamus right now because of his predictions on Joel Embiid and Nas Reed. Um, Ox, do you want to, while we present you your award for being Ostradamus, do you? No, that's you not, a, that's not, that's not necessary. I mean, to, no, that's not necessary. I think that Joel Embiid tech was just obvious. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's not going to sit out the playoffs. He needs this for his legacy. Mm-hmm. And uh, just the to- timeline wise, you know, he, had plenty of time to come back. I don't think that's anything special. And then the 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 wolves, like we all we all know Nas got game, and you don't have to be car empty towns to be able to be productive. So oh, I was so confused about why. Okay, no, yeah, no big deal, no big deal. I think I, I you know 
It's nothing special. We just talking hoop, man. All right, Jack. Do you think Joel Embiid is underrated or overrated? Oh, man. More properly rated. No, I, I think if anything, he's underrated. He's terrific. Um, I would I would take straight up in a would you rather, I would take Joel Embiid over Nikola Jokic. Um, and I think with Philadelphia in the seven hole right now and a chance to potentially, I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to get out of the play and they're trying to get into the sixth seed. And Indiana's got a good one to, uh, against Cleveland, so they could lose and fall back. If Philly finds their way into the sixth seed, they're going to be all right. But if they have to play a team like Milwaukee in round one, do you guys think that Philly could win that series? Because I, you know, I don't think Philly can contest with Boston for a second. No ifs, ands, or buts. That uh, I'm sorry, Philadelphia is not their best self right now. Understanding and be, you know, he had an MVP season before he got hurt. And he's kind of returned to the play. And obviously what you guys have been saying about he's not to the 100% level just yet. So there's no, really no world where they could beat the Celtics, especially this Celtics team. But Milwaukee, they're kind of shaky right now, especially with the, I don't know the significance of the Giannis injury, but. The Achilles is good. The Achilles is good. It's just a yeah. Hey, they game. said KD's was good. <laughs> no, we, we 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 definitely knew that was way worse. But they said the, there was no damage to the Achilles, and we got to see how his the, the, this. this I'm not playing him for the rest of the season. I, I, I just me neither. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so, no, so, I'm not saying he's not touching the floor. Absolutely not. No. But I also seen him. I also seen him come back from a hyperextended knee. So this wouldn't. There's a reason why he's called the freak. Yeah. So I'm I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to subscribe to him just being done. I'm not playing him for the rest of the regular season though. I'm good with that. But I also haven't seen a team like the Milwaukee. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember. You, We had this conversation yesterday, Moss. A team that a bunch of teams are looking at that's a top seed, like food. Like Philly looking at Milwaukee like, yo, we can beat these dudes. Yeah. We can beat them. That's Indiana. I, I, I think Philly thinks they could beat it. I get what you're saying, Chill. I'm not taking away. Philly don't want nothing saying. to do with Boston. The, they want nothing I, I, to do with Boston. They're, they're trying to get that seven seed. I'm, 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 I'm not saying. I'm not saying Philly's hunting Boston. Like, oh yeah, we 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 want to go up to Boston. We 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 want to play against them. No, I'm not saying that. I don't think that's the case at all. But I I sincerely believe Philly thinks they can beat anybody, right. as, and as they should because they're really that good. I don't think you're. Philly would have to play Boston eventually. So the mindset for Philly has to be, oh, we can beat any team. But in reality, you don't want to have to play Boston in round one. You want to have to play Boston when they're at their weakest, which is when the Eastern Conference Finals. We all know that. But I, I got to ask a question because my man Jack said he'll take Joel over Jokic. Which mm -hmm. I personally don't think that's crazy. But I got to ask you guys, though. Do you guys think it's a chance that Joel and Maxi have become a better duo than Jokic and Murray. No, Ron. No, absolutely not. No, mm -mm. no way. One, no. one. Those two have been playing together for eight seasons. That's number one. Number two, the way that they play off of each other, the shot creator that Jamal Murray is, the knockdown mid range shooter that he is, the downhill guy that he is. Joel Embiid is not the distributor that Joker is. And the offense, the way it runs, which which runs through Joker, he doesn't do, and B does not do what Joker does in that offense. And those two guys together, the way that they play off each other, it's unmatched, especially when we get into the meat and potatoes of games. Because those guys can exploit any, they, those guys can exploit any mismatch. I can't say that with Joel and B because when he gets gassed, he makes untimely turnovers. He finds himself hovering around the long ball line. He doesn't play that well off of those other guys as opposed to Joker and Jamal Murray who do. So, no, I don't think it's a question between those two guys. The last time we saw Jokic without Murray, he lost to Golden State in that first round. I think Murray makes Jokic as good as he is right now, right? Whereas Embiid, he can do everything he does alone and can we say the same thing about can we say the same thing about Joel Embiid can we say the same thing about Joker because he does the same thing with Murray and don't forget in that series against Denver I think Joker I think he was like 31 and 15 it wasn't like he was just okay in that series right 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 but I think Murray makes Jokic and Denver and that duo 
a right. hundred times better than Jokic himself. I think Embiid, regardless of who his duo is, is always going to be the dominant Joel Embiid. Wasn't Jokic the MVP? <laughs> and he should have been it last year too. Yeah, and I, I think Steph Curry should have won that MVP. But oh well. I mean, I'm not, I'm not surprised. We, we've met someone like you. No, so, but <laughs> what year? When, 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 when no. Steph Curry should have won the league MVP in 22? The mm, no, the year before they won it, when they got bounced in the play, they were the eight seed. Yeah, when they were the eight seed, he should have yeah. won the league. The, the year he led the league in scoring, that's why he should have won the league MVP. Yeah, because, because the, he, he I think the MVP award has to be abolished because the the criteria and what the actual award means, nobody has any idea because every year it's a different type of award. Yes, we do. Abolish, abolish the MVP is fire. <laughs> Let's just get rid of it. No, we have to. It should be. It should at least be the best player award. And if not, like. Russell Westbrook's the prime example when he won his MVP as a That was six an anomaly. Man. That was an anomaly, just like Joker was an anomaly. Those two guys were anomalies. Everybody else who's won the league MVP, they've been on teams that won, win, and they've been huge in those teams' success. Huge. Now, what I don't want to do is I don't want to dis I don't want to discredit other guys who play at that level. The one guy that I think about more than anybody, and Mars and I have had this conversation about Kobe Bryant in 2005, 2006. There's no way that you'll ever get me to say that Steve Nash was a better player than Kobe Bryant. That's the goofiest shit ever yeah. to say that. No, because he was not. But when you think about, but when you think about how valuable Steve Nash was to what Phoenix was doing, add that to the fact that they were at the top of the Western Conference, winning 62 games. And then the next year, Without Stoudemire, he didn't play the whole season. He missed three games. Steve Nash is almost responsible for 50% of that offense. How much more valuable is he than Dirk Nowitzki was, than LeBron James was, than Kobe Bryant was in terms of value? Not the best player. Where we get screwed up is we get screwed up because sometimes the best player in the league does win the MVP, and that's what we categorize it as. It's the best player in the league. Well, not all the time. It's not. Yeah, I think – I think Jokic right now is getting LeBron treatment that LeBron never got, which is just if if we don't really know who the clear cut MVP is, then just give it to Jokic because he has a stat line and he's at the top of his conference. In my opinion, Luka Doncic should be the clear cut MVP, and I'm the biggest Tatum guy in the world, and I believe that Tatum has an argument too. If you're going to give Jokic the MVP, you should give it to Jason Tatum because the Celtics are up 14 games in the Eastern Conference. But if not, you give it to Luka. Off that because... logic, off that logic, Mars. That's I what don't. I don't think Denver's. I don't think Jokic is the front runner because his team's top of the conference. Why is well, Jokic the front runner, and he is the front runner? It's I don't get it. Because he's it. Pro, because if he hasn't been the best player this season, he's been the second best player. That's why. No, but they're time. they're making him the front runner because everyone thinks he's the best player in the NBA. I can get with SGA, Jack. I can get with SGA. Yeah, but, give it to but, it, but it's not. But it's not because Luka. it's not. I don't think it's because his team is top of the conference. I think that helps. I think if if Dallas were the three seed, I think that Luca would be running away with it. To be honest, but because Dallas are the five seed, yeah, that Jokic and Luca, in my opinion, have been the two best performing players this season because Embiid's been hurt. Which would mean that I think the separator between Luca and Jokic would be the winning. There we but go. I don't think that's enough to get Jason Tatum into the conversation. Because Tatum, Jokic would Tatum have an had the ability. Tatum had the ability in the second half of the season to go get that MVP, and he didn't do that. And that's okay because the, the, it's the championship. This is about a championship. This ain't. He doesn't care about the MVP. He cares about winning that championship. No, he cares about the league MVP. He just couldn't do it. He, 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 absolutely, cares yeah. 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 he absolutely cares about it, just like SGA cares about it, just like all these guys care about it. Right, they care about the defensive player. You think Jokic cares about it? Like yeah, genuinely, you think Jokic cares? About it. Yes, I do think he cares about it. I that. also think there's some aspect of how yeah. good the Celtics were in that starting five that Tatum couldn't get the stats that he wanted to get. Well, his, like, his production went down because of that crew. But to answer Mars's question, Mars, you can't be that good and you just showing up, or you can't be that good and I don't really care that much. I got other interests. He does have other interests, sure. But when he's when he's playing basketball, he is locked in. No, I think he, he cares is. about basketball. I just yeah, don't know it, if he cares about the media's accolades. I do, I and here's here's the reason why here's the reason why I think he cares about that, boss. Just as a competitor, and he hears the chatter also. So when you win the league MVP or when you are the NBA champion, 
I'm pretty confident that if Anthony Davis would have won the league MVP, Joker would be like, yo, I bust his ass every time I went up against him. What the hell's going on? I'm sure he would be thinking that. How is this dude the league MVP over me? Now, he might not say that out loud, but he would show it in the playoffs, just like Olajuwon did against David Robinson. That's my league MVP that you got. And I'm going to show everybody why I'm better than you. So the, I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to the ideology that these guys don't really care about accolades. Absolutely, they do. That's why they give them yeah, out. I think, I think it's possible. I, I just think everyone's different. Everyone reacts to things differently. Now, I, certainly there's players who care. Do I think everyone cares? Probably not. I think I don't think there's one thing that everyone agrees on, like ever in in life. Like, so do I think most people would care about accolades? Sure. I don't think that would apply to everyone. I don't think Jimmy Butler particularly cares at this point in his career. Uh, I think Jimmy Butler's made that perfectly clear. At this now, you point, might, Mars, yeah. Like at this said. point, there might have been a time, but now we're at right. a point where I don't think Jimmy Butler cares. I don't particularly think Jokic cares about winning the MVP. I don't think it bothers him, but it might. Would it, be because, I, would, would it be at this point, Mars? Because if he had never won it, you think that he would care? He doesn't strike me as someone who cares, but he might. Like that's maybe I now. Don't, I don't know. I don't know him personally. He just doesn't strike me as someone who's like. Yeah, I want the MVP. If he yeah. wins, it's like, yeah, cool. I want the MVP. Yeah, yeah I right. think he casually so, stumbles yeah. upon the MVP. Like, but I do think he loves basketball. I've never questioned his love for basketball. I think <clears> everything <throat> like there's the difference between basketball and the NBA. Jokic loves basketball. Everything that comes with the NBA, the media obligations, mm, yeah, that, the interviews, the yeah. fame, all of that. Yeah. Jokic could do without all of that. He would yeah. much rather just yeah. play basketball, win yeah. games, and then get paid. That, that's it. I don't think he cares about the extra stuff. And for me, I think he counts the accolades as the extra stuff. I don't think I, he cares I, about it. I think guys like Jimmy, though, Jimmy, I think guys like Jimmy don't care because they know they never had action at the MVP. Like, no matter no matter what, Jimmy's not going to MVP. Like, no matter, even the past five, six years, no matter what Jimmy does, he's not one of the cool kids. He's not getting the MVP. I'm not so talking about him, just the MVP. I, 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 don't think, I don't think Jimmy cares about being an all-star. I don't think he cares about being right. an all-NBA player. I don't think he cares about any of those things. He might, yeah. because once again, I don't know these people. I just like, I think it comes from a lot of our opinions on these guys as people. I think we mm -hmm. try and apply like how we would uh, react in that situation. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I think that's just how you relate to things. I know me personally, I don't really care too much for awards. I, I don't really care. So maybe when I see guys like Jokic, I can understand why I can see someone not caring because I know me personally, I don't really care. But maybe yeah. Chill was like, when Chill, when Chill feels like he got slighted in an awards, Chill cares. So he's like, how can someone not care about these things when it's a recognition of how great you are? And that's not a knock against Chill. I'm just saying, like, I think as humans, we try and relate how we would feel in that situation. Yes. And I think, I think for me, it's like, I can see why someone wouldn't care about an award. Because me personally, I try not to care about people's opinions. So if right. someone doesn't think I deserve the award, why would I care? Like, okay. And, we, and when, you, when you put it that way, Morris, because there's five of us up here, we all have five different opinions. So imagine how all 460 people. Exactly. Are, yeah, like, all everyone different. will feel about something differently. That's all it really is for I me. I can definitely dig that. I but with that and, and to your point, Mars, with that being said, these guys do care about what other people think. Yeah, Unfortunately, for sure. and, and stuff like the league MVP, uh, who's the best player? They hear that stuff. And they go work on their games or they say to their friends, oh, you think this dude better than me? You think that, I mean, how many times have I heard Sean Marion or Andre Iguodala talk about guys that he felt like he was better than that are in a certain space? So, I mean, I feel like they do the same thing with accolades because like you just mentioned, when you're talking about being the league MVP, when I'm talking about being the defensive player of the year, you're talking about being in this category, now I'm in a different space. And when somebody else wins it, when I know that I should have done that, or I should have been in that, not just in that conversation, I should have been that. The, 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 the idea of them not, not necessarily not caring, but the idea of them kind of blowing it off doesn't happen. I mean, it actually motivates them because I want to win it now. I'm sure Tim Duncan, I'm sure Tim Duncan sits at home from time to time thinking I should have been a defensive player of the year at some point in my career. I'm sure that that's, I'm sure that that's crossed his mind. I should have been the defensive player of the year at least one time. All right, y'all. We're going to go ahead and dive into these super chats. Shout out mm -hmm. to everybody that sent through a super chat. Shout out to everybody that's in here watching. Go ahead and slap that like button if you haven't. Appreciate everybody that shot through these super chats once again. Uh, and speaking of MVP talks, which is actually ironic that this is the first super chat I'm going to get to from CKF. He said, even though I know he won't win it, I believe Jalen Brunson 
should be an MVP combos with what he's done this season, especially with the injuries they had. He should at least be top 10 for MVP. He and might, by the way, Jalen Brunson might, had 45 points last night. He might be higher than that. He, he might be high. He, he might be higher than that. Considering what, what New York has done this season off the strength of him. Yeah. He might be higher than 10. Chill so town. Right now. He is and, gearing and up almost a two seed. Go, go ahead. Ox. To, he is gearing up to put on one of the biggest carry jobs we have ever seen. Mm. Jalen Brunson is about to pull. I, well, I'm not going to say he's about to, but he's gearing up and getting ready to put on one of the biggest carry jobs we have seen in a long time. I told y'all, <laughs> Jalen Brunson made me a believe about two months ago. The Jaylen, and, I'm Jaylen not, Brunson. and I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I'm on this train. And I'm riding it until, <laughs> until it falls off the tracks. He is trying. He is getting ready to put on the biggest carry job we have seen in a long time. Shout out to Jalen Brunson. Because like I said, I have no problem because I'm a basketball fan before anything. Before a team fan, I'm a basketball fan. And he has made me a believer. I was with Becky Hammond. Me and Becky Hammond were seeing eye to eye. He's too little. He can't carry. Fuck all that. Mm-hmm. Yo, Jalen Brunson is ready to put on the biggest carry job I have ever seen. I, 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 I got a question for the chat because you guys, like, I can't never have a change of opinion. Ox, on the other hand, has seen something different. And he like, wait a minute. I seen something different. So right. I'm going the other way. When I change my mind on something, I'm a hypocrite. Can you guys explain that? Mm. I'm just wondering. We need, like, hey, we got questions and we need answers, Chad. It's how it goes, man. It's how, it's how it goes. It's how, it's how it goes. It's how it goes. Doom, it's doom, it doom, 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 doom. Come on, chat. We need answers. Just wondering. I'm, I'm, I'm right. just wondering. All right. Um, I do want to say about Jalen Brunson. When the lights get bright, we've never not seen Jalen Brunson perform. He gets busy. All right. the way back. Right. I'm talking about busy. Villanova. He I'm talking busy. about. The playoff yes, year when Luca was out a couple years. Mm -hmm. Talking about last year, Jalen Brunson, when it's time to get busy, Jalen Brunson gets to it. But with you being a New York guy, you currently live in New York, right, Jack? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I talk to me about Jason Tatum. Yeah, so <laughs> I Jalen Brunson, you mean or Jason Tatum? Yeah, why'd you say Brunson. Jason Tatum? Why'd you say Jason Tatum? Right. Uh, I want to hear some more Jason Tatum propaganda. But Jalen Brunson. Yeah, no, I, I mean. Listen, I can talk about Jason Tatum all you want. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Br Brunson, listen, I've I've seen it up close and personal a couple of times, being at a couple of games at Madison Square Garden, and the way the the way everyone this it feels like the entire city of New York has gotten behind this kid's back, and it's a really cool thing. It reminds me of like when Isaiah Thomas, Celtic version Isaiah Thomas was. You know, little lefty curving up the the Washington Wizards with John Wall and Bradley Beal and that juggernaut. It, but Jalen Brunson seems almost better in many ways and deserves to be in the MVP conversation because respectfully, New York, whether they've had their guys in the lineup or not, it's been inconsistent. And the fact that New York's still a three seed and still had it all pretty much together, that's all credit to Jalen Brunson. With that being said, they have zero chance in the Eastern Conference. They can make a little run. They can beat any team other than Boston, but respectfully, it's Boston's year. They got something for Boston, Jay. Uh, listen, if you want to meet in the Eastern Conference Finals, be my guest. That's cool. Well, well, well first, let me say this, though, Jack. I, I, I got the Celtics winning. Right, I got the Celtics good. winning it all. But, but you think New York but, is the biggest well, contest for Boston? I've been, I've been, I've been going back and forth since. So I had Boston all the way up until New York started making these trades. When New York got OG Ananobi, when New York got filled up their bench with Bojan and Alec Burke, that's when I kind of was like, all right, well, maybe New York got something for him. And then when Mitchell Robinson came back, I'm like, well, they can't do it. So I'm really on the fence going back and forth between Boston and New York. I think Boston. I think New York got enough firepower to handle Boston, bro. I really do. I think. I think. And let's because a lot of times I hear up here that it's about who who has the best player. Best player wins in NBA. I don't necessarily subscribe to that way of thinking. Yeah. But for for argument's sake, let's go that route. Absolutely yeah, so not. Think, You're not going to say that Jalen Brunson is better think, than Jason no, Tatum. No, he's not. Right now. I'm, I'm not saying. I'm not saying he's better. I'm just saying, like in a situation, I've seen. I've seen Jason Tatum come with silver dollar silver dollar eyes before. Right. And I think I think Jalen Brunson is equipped to go bucket for bucket with Jason Tatum for sure, for sure. I, I don't think New York has enough 
to compete with Boston. And I don't, and I think a lot of people are going to see truly how great Boston is Mm -hmm. not until the playoffs and that's okay, Mm -hmm. but they're going to legitimately run teams out the building the way UConn did in March Madness. Box, explain what I got something for you means. Because when I hear you say that, that means that what you're looking for, that work is over here. So explain mm-hmm. when you talk about the New York Knicks, explain I got something for you. That means you leave you leaving here bloody, one way or another. Like mm-hmm. you, it's, you're not, you're not gonna, they're not gonna walk in the Madison Square Garden and leave happy. Even if they win, they're not leaving happy. Like right. it's so I'm I'm not saying when I say they got something for them, I'm not saying they're gonna beat them. I'm saying they're the most equipped team in the East to beat the Celtics. I don't think I don't think Milwaukee can beat them. I don't think any other team in the East can beat the Celtics. Philly, except for Indiana, East. Cleveland. No, I, I don't Heat. think any other team in the East can beat not especially not Cleveland. I and I, I was I, I like Cleveland. I don't think they can touch the Celtics. So your logic, Ox, is y'all. If y'all think y'all just walking in here and walking by us, we got another thing. You got another thing. Oh, oh my bad, my bad. Miami, Miami. They don't want to play Miami, Miami, but I, I, they'll probably be Miami. Miami, but they don't want to play Miami. But I, so I, I think I think the only team with a legit chance to beat the Celtics is the New York Knickerbockers. Jack, we on record. Jack, I'm on record, and I'm saying this. I, I said it already. I think they smoke Miami in four games, maybe five times. I think Damn. they run right past them. I think they run you, right past them. Yeah, you 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 think Boston beats Miami? I think they smoke them in or, four games, maybe five. Maybe five. All right, I I'm think on that. I uh, listen for I think the they last smoke them for the last three months. I, that's all I've been trying to preach on record is it. I'm taking a brooms out. And I said it last year, which is the the worst part about it is like last year when you get to the Eastern Conference finals and you had just Tatum went for 51 against the Sixers in that seven game series. And they had come back, you know, Tatum masterclass in the fourth quarter in game six. The momentum was high and you just felt like it was going to be Boston, Denver. Right. And then Grant Williams happens. You lose the first two games, you get down 2-0, you get down 3-0 and then you try and make a miracle and it doesn't happen. But I sit here and I'm like, there's never been a Miami has zero chance. They they are not built to play against Boston. We know that Boston's the way better team. And then when you talk about revenge and Boston is just going to run them out the gym, this is going to be a dominant. I don't want to see you guys score more than 80 points every single game. And we're putting up 140. It's 4-0. I'm, I'm going down to Miami. I'm taking the brooms out and I'm sweeping on the streets. Bring me playoff Jimmy. Bring me so-called Michael Jordan. Because guess what? We got a guy, and his name is Jason Tatum. But not Drew Holiday, though, right? We got a starting five. I'm, I'm, Drew Holiday can't got, possibly guard Jimmy Butler, though, ten. right? Huh? Drew, Drew Holiday can't possibly guard Jimmy Butler, though, right? It's, no, what, I, happened, what happened last year is not going to happen this year. Correct. Oh, my God. Let, let, let's let's yeah, so we it. can say that, but every yeah. time it's revisionist history, we can't always say, "Oh, well, this happened last year, so this it's going to happen this year." Well, Drew's on a different yeah. team. That that's number one. Absolutely. Number two, I just said he probably they can't guard him. What what I'm what I'm saying is how that happened last year. That's not going to happen this year. They're not going to leave that dude on an island to be to fend for himself like he did last year, like the Milwaukee Bucks did. They're not going to do that. Man. No, Mm-mm. that's not going to happen. And I'm going on record saying it right now. If the Celtics jump on these dudes and they up 3-1 and they up 3-0, game four in uh, serve arena in Miami, I'm in that arena with my Jason Tatum jersey on. I'm there. (laughs) I am there. I'm I'm, I'm saying it right now. March, April the 10th, 2024. If the Boston Celtics jump on the Miami Heat and they're up 3-0 and that elimination game, game four, is in their building, I might be taking off work that day and I'm in Miami. With hey, my chill. Jason Tatum jersey on. Oh, okay. so, right what, what color is your Jason Tatum jersey? You got the green it's, one or the white? I got the black. I got the black one. The, oh, okay. And it's going to be on. Yep. All right. And hey, hey be Jack. Rocking. By the way, in case you haven't picked up what's going on here, um, Chill Town. He is almost. I think almost as big of a Jason Jason Tatum advocate as you. I don't. I don't. I don't think he has you. But you guys are. You're, you're neck and neck. You're close. Do you think he do you do you think he's gonna win six championships? Because that's what I think. Oh, I don't think he's gonna six. I don't so you got I'm him as Jason not, Jordan. I'm not gonna go as far as six. I think they win the NBA championship this year, though. I do think yeah. that. I think they're I think they have set the way that Boston has built this team with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. If they just continue to do what they do best and it works, the sky is the limit for for frankly a dynasty for this team. It's gonna get tricky. 
it's going to get tricky at the at the at the next year because Jason Tatum comes off the books after next year. So mm-hmm. we got to start paying these guys. Yep. You just paid Jalen Brown. So Drew Holiday is coming off the books after next year. So there's it, it, they're definitely in a win now situation, but I think they win it this year. I do think that. Yeah. Let's let's. But, but I but I do want to. I, yeah. I, I do want to. I do want to dead the logic and anybody that 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 doesn't buy into this you clearly are paying attention jason tatum is not kobe bryant let's kill that right now he does not think he is kobe bryant there is nobody who thinks that jason tatum is kobe oh, bryant. Well, chill it any, might be any anybody, jason anybody tatum kobe bryant? no way oh. no way no way no way. <laughs> and, no way you don't have to do this right now okay uh, no way. I want, jason tatum is not kobe bryant no he is not He's not Michael Jordan. He's not LeBron James. He's actually all three of them combined. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I am so dead serious when I say that. When you talk about from generation to generation and just players learning from the greats, that's what you're supposed to do. You pass the torch. I think when MJ passed it to Kobe, Kobe passed it to Tatum. And I think Jason Tatum is legitimately the perfect basketball player whenever anyone tries to say something negative about jason tatum nobody ever says anything about his game they just say what has he not done yet he hasn't won a championship so once he wins a championship everyone shuts the hell up and tatum's just gonna keep winning them all right steph curry hits one shot the rest come easy that's how this championship thing works for jason tatum i don't necessarily disagree with what you said about people you know what i'm not gonna get started today i'm just gonna <laughs> get into these super chats and then we'll continue to go from there uh shout out to Jalen brunson by the way um he, he does need to be higher in the mvp race dsg piccolo said some good hoops last night scoot hooped ignore the turnovers wanted one more point to get the 20 and 10 but i'm cool with 15 assists hope Giannis recovers well Beasley has turned into the, a Lakers beast. Oh, that means beast. Lakers. Oh, it's turned into the Lakers, Lakers beast. beast. Yes. Ah. I, 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 I just don't like non-contact injuries, Ron. When I see a dude running and he just falls over, that shit makes me nervous. I do not like that, man. And to see Giannis, was it just a cramp? It wasn't what happened with KD where, you know, KD looked like somebody shot him. He was like, and, and looked back. Giannis just grabbed his his calf like he got cramped up or something like that. But that still makes me nervous because when you're talking about the Achilles and something like that happens, I'm not just losing you this year. I'm losing you next year too. And everything that we started goes out the window. They said his Achilles is fully intact right. and that it's uh, he had an MRI and uh, everything is good. It's looking good. They're very hopeful for him. Um, they said his return to play depends on how quickly. So it's it's technically a left calf strain. So they said his yeah. return to play is all contingent on how quickly that heals. I'm assuming Mars alluded to this earlier. He's not going to play any more regular season games. So probably just he shouldn't. He should not. He doesn't. He should not. No. I think they play. Um, I might be wrong. I was listening to um, the Orlando broadcast. I'm pretty sure Orlando play them twice in the last three games of the season which is very no, important for seeding OKC, I think. for obvious Huge reasons seedings. they only a game so, ahead yeah. of the next so, two spots so for seeding i mean maybe maybe they do want to play him i don't know but i'm pretty sure they play orlando twice they, yeah they, they last, play orlando the last three games, the last three games. They, they play orlando tonight it's in milwaukee then they play okc tomorrow or not tomorrow uh on friday, friday. in okc and then uh, on Sunday, last game of the season, they have to travel to Orlando. Those games are huge, Joe. For, yeah, both, that, for both Milwaukee and Oklahoma yeah. City. And if, Orlando, if Orlando win both of those games, they finish with the same record, and I think they have the tiebreaker. Uh, yeah, you know what that means, man. Unfortunately, we're not going to have to play the Heat. Or the mean, unless, unless, but, uh, unless Milwaukee Jack, be okay. So you can have fun against the Sixers. I don't care who we play. Bring me Miami. Bring me Philly. Bring me whoever. We got to play them all eventually. So just one game, one series at a time. Does that mean they drop to the four spot? Hmm. They, they, if they finish the season with forty-eight wins, they technically could be caught by every team from six. Technically, but wow. I don't. Indy has the tiebreaker. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yes. I don't know about. Oh. I don't know about Cleveland. Orlando would if they Cleveland beat them twice. 
Cleveland beat them twice. And then the Knicks, I don't know. But they could, I think they could theoretically drop to six, but it would depend on tie breaks and everything that I don't know about. They, 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 they lost to the Knicks in the Garden. They lost to them. They beat them not too long ago. And then they beat them again earlier in the season. I think they beat the Knicks twice this year. I'm not sure. Maybe. Yo, can y'all imagine the six or not the Sixers, the Bucks dropping to the fifth or sixth seed? They have well the the Cavs they split is two and two. Right. Um, well, I'm saying let's let's say the Cavs don't lose and the Bucks lose the next three games and they're at 34 losses. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. So the Cavs would have 49 wins. That's why we can't even talk about these matchups until it all starts. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all about the, 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 bu- the Bucks. Weekend. The Bucks could end up being yeah. The Bucks could end up being the sixty from two to six in a week. If, That's if nuts, they, if they if they lose all of their games and the Knicks win out, the Magic <laughs> win out, the Cavs and the Pacers will win out. They'd be the six seed. Boston is up. Which is games. is that ridiculous to think that they could do that, Moss? Well, they play OKC, which is OKC fighting for the one seed. So, you know, OKC won't have to come and, out. And, and Shea's yep. back, too. Yeah, yep. Shea is back. Just gave the Kings 40. Um, and um, Orlando are playing for their seeding against the Bucks yep. in two of those games. So, if Orlando win both of them, they could lose out. It's, who knows? Mm-hmm. All right, y'all. Uh, and we'll, we'll dive into the standings on both sides. We'll get back into that. But I do have more super chats mm-hmm. that we got to get to. It's Hack Iris said, <clears throat> Jack is too young. Never saw Prime Kobe. Kobe would be in Steph's shorts. Pause. Ooh, Steph geez. isn't blowing. All right, all right. My, my bad. Steph, crazy. My bad. <laughs> Steph isn't blowing past Kobe. Term, Mars. Oh, crazy. If you go to the bathroom, I'm standing outside the door. Yo. He, yes. probably stands, he probably stands in right next to him at the urinal. She's probably right. staring at him, too. That's the oh, idea. Yo. All right. Anyway. <laughs> hey, Ron. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mars got to chill for a second. That's OD. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> it's Hack Iris said, Jack is too young. <laughs> Never saw a part of Kobe. Kobe would be in Steph's shorts. Pause. Steph isn't, isn't blowing past Kobe or creating consistent separation to get that shot off. You think Kobe checks up and backs up? Do you think Kobe checks up and backs up? I thank you, Ron. Damn, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think everyone knows how I feel about this situation. Mm. I think Steph wins the game. I think Steph wins the one on one. But you know, basketball is basketball. It's a fun sport. So get your popcorn ready for that matchup. And uh, Mario knows best. Said Prime Steph over Prime Kobe. So you're not you're, you're not completely no on that way. island by yourself. Yeah, there's a couple no of way. people out there. No way. Keeping it lit. Mm-hmm. Tyler Tucker said Celtics with the most ethical game in history. First in NBA history, a team hasn't shot one free throw. Yeah, that's crazy. No Insane. Didn't, strike, didn't go to the strike one time. And the Bucks only got two free throws. Yanis scored. Right. Out. That's it. You're telling the me game, SGA the game just shoots two. more free throws than the whole team? The SG, SGA had more free throws than the whole game. Well, the game had two free throws. The game. So, the game. Does that yeah. prove no defense, or does that prove that the refs just didn't call anything? Oh, no, they was playing defense. Jason Tatum got fouled when he dumped on Brooke Lopez. They ain't call that. They were they, the NBA have done the NBA refs they, being the NBA. The NBA refs. have stopped calling fouls on drives. Like that's what's affected the free throws since like the right. start break. The, they just Unless don't, it's yeah. they just, they just but SGA's free throws have gone down as of late. Now last game he got like I want to say 15 or 16 free throws, but generally speaking. His free throws have gone down as well post All Star break. It's because he's the biggest driver in the NBA. If you drive a lot, your free throws have gone down. Um, I don't know why they did it because now they're just missing blatant fouls. Because Embiid, Embiid gets those calls because he's not driving. That's why I said the NBA have cracked down on drives. Embiid doesn't drive. That's why he still gets free throws. It's on drives that they stop calling. But um, yeah, so I'm six, interested. Also, I mean, I oh, so she had twenty off. free throws. Okay, my fault. Six, I forget six. 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 Last, Last night they had twenty. But two of them, I think, were intentional fouls. Like, so two fouls, I think, were intentional. So he had 16 regular free throws. I think two were intentional, if I remember correctly. So, Mars, since the All-Star break, he's had three games with double-digit free throws since the All-Star break. That's it. 
Previous to the yeah, All-Star. That, that says a lot. That says a lot. Yeah. Previous to the All-Star break, he's had it looks like 10 of it looks like 10 of them. And I'm and I'm not saying he's never gonna get to the free throw line. Like, he's still gonna get free throws, but there's been a clear intention to stop rewarding fouls on drives. So like Shea Shea had a stretch where two two free throws, One. six. 15, 6, 6, 6, 3, 6, 4. Now, some of it you could say is because of the injury. Fine. But just generally speaking, post All Star break, his free throw attempts have changed. And most of the league has changed, which mm. is, I don't really have a problem with it. But when they're missing clear fouls, that's where I have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm running a poll right now. Um, it's been up for a while, but I said, who's the biggest threat for the Celtics in the East? Uh, put the Sixers, Bucks, Knicks, Heat. And as of right now, it's a three-way tie at 26% between the Sixers, Bucks, and Heat. Oh, well, oh. Sixers went up. Oh, Sixers got it. All right. I just so. had to vote. I just had to vote real quick. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I just had to vote. Well, yeah. the, the Sixers won the poll. So the Sixers oh. right now. Good work, Sixers right now are the biggest threat for the Heat or for the, for the Celtics, according to the chat. I also ran a poll. Who's you guys' MVP? And the chat's MVP so far this season. And he kind of ran away with it too. Was Luka Doncic? Mm. Shout out Luka. RJ the God said, "Who do y'all look at and say I don't care if that if that series goes seven games, they better not lose in the first or second round under no circumstances." Celtics. <laughs> the Celtics. I think, I think Celtics, no. and I think the Celtics and the Nuggets are the only two teams you can say that about. If Jokic tears his Achilles, I don't think I'm surprised that the Nuggets lose. Come on, Mars. It says under no circumstances. Hoping that everyone's healthy. It says under no circumstances. Right. That's why you have to see the series unfold to see how you can explain a loss or a win. There's no there's no situation where I say ever under no circumstances should a team lose. If Yanis can't play in the playoffs, I'm not going to say different. the Bucs should lose. So, right. I don't I'm care who they play in the first round. I don't yeah. care who they play in the first round. If, if, Joker, if Joker is hurt or he's not available as much, if he misses half the series, even if he plays, Yep. Half the series, I'm not going to say that they should have won. No. Yeah, so there's no such thing as under no circumstances they shouldn't lose, in my opinion, because there's going to be circumstances where a loss would feel borderline inevitable. Including Boston, because... Yeah, if, if Tatum Jason Tatum, Tatum, Jason Tatum, Tatum is the best player on the best team, and I don't care what you say about how many good all-star players they have around them, you go as far as your best player takes you, and that's Jason Tatum on that team. They don't do anything without him. In the Hunter class. with the super chat said champion versus choker. Be for real, y'all. These are my Jokic and Embiid. I don't I don't think you can call someone who's been injured a choker, but I mean I guess well. Uh Necro X said, I feel sorry for people that don't watch football. Absolute masterclass games yesterday. Mars, how you feeling going into the second leg? Mars already told us already. <laughs> Mars, do you watch football? Not really. I, I, have, I, you been, have you been I watching football, football at all? all? Um, no, no, I don't pay too much attention. You already told us. When my <laughs> team, when my team plays, I did I, I did watch our game last night. We drew, so yay. But um generally speaking, yeah, I don't really care. I seen LeBron say basketball is a more popular sport than football. Not even close. <laughs> That's insane. No, but it's not. I think it's I think it's closer than y'all think, though. No, it's not. Uh, I'm no, I'm, I'm not saying it's close. I'm saying I think yeah, it's yeah, closer yeah, than yeah. Think. Closer than we think, maybe. But LeBron said, "Yeah, yeah, basketball is the most popular sport in the world." And he's like, "I know the football fans are gonna be mad at me, but I still believe it. Like, it's not for you to believe. It's reality <laughs> versus fake. Like, it's not for you to believe in. Damn, it's like bro, saying, oh, I don't believe in trees. Trees. <laughs> well, trees exist, sir. So there's nothing for you to not believe in. So." Yeah. Bron, That's the guy I, a, a great if, podcast, he can just lie. If, if I'm a Boston Celtic fan, LeBron, I could actually go to a bar in Los Angeles and sit down and have something to eat. If I'm a Liverpool fan, if I'm in Manchester, my man got to meet me somewhere else because they might try to kill me if I'm there. Those two things are not the same thing, brother. No, they not. That just that just means it's crazy fans. That doesn't mean it's not possible. No, that, means it's, that, that, means, that means fans of this sport are psychopaths. That doesn't mean it's not popular. Yeah, but, but, football, is, football, is, football is played more worldwide. It's watched more worldwide. The biggest I'm, events yeah. are watched more worldwide. There's I, more I understand, people playing. Understand that like, there's no argument for basketball to be more popular. So I, he just lies. Like, that's all it is. He's wrong. He's wrong, Mark. Yeah. You're right. 
LeBron James is wrong about that. I, I, in my personal opinion, I think he's wrong. I don't think that it's a full yeah. popular sport. What I'm saying is they're playing basketball in places that I don't think everybody realizes they're playing basketball. They're playing basketball oh, everywhere basketball now. Too. For sure. Basketball, 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 basketball is yeah. definitely more popular than I think people realize. Like they're they're playing like you, the you, you go the, somewhere the, and you go somewhere and be like, I don't think they're playing ball. I think basketball is more popular than baseball too, Marsh. Yeah, I think cricket's the second. Or not too. Cricket. <laughs> Cricket. That's, um, that's yeah, because, a, that's, a lot of people play cricket. You're right. A, yeah, a lot because of Asia, play Asia play is like the most densely populated yeah. continent, so it kind of gets carried. I don't think it's as like basketball might be in more countries like popular, but cricket has such a hold on Asia. That, uh, and I know China's like basketball is very popular in China, but yeah. cricket has such a hold on Asia that is is difficult. Yeah, that's yeah, my, so my, only know, argument, my only argument. Is I think, but I'm not arguing. If someone says basketball versus cricket, think, I don't know the actual number. I just know football is clearly the number one. I just feel like when you are somewhere and people don't even watch the game and they know you, like Giannis is in Sweden and people know who Giannis is. I mean, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Hey, so I know y'all, I used to be cold in cricket. I was actually ranked in the state of Washington. <laughs> you never played cricket, Ron. You lying. All right. You never played cricket, Ron. <laughs> right. I just know. Yeah, I'm I'm like, this is, this is I'm, your I'm, man. I really did play cricket though. When I was in Australia, it was awesome. not you, not you. I'm talking about your man. This is your man over yeah, here. I don't know if people like cricket or not. I can't. I, I've never seen him play cricket, but uh, hey, Chad, I'm, I'm, I'm black with dread, so I don't play cricket. You never play cricket. <laughs> <laughs> like Jamaicans don't play cricket. Hey, they, they, they all black with dreads. They all play cricket. <laughs> PC cricket coming soon too. By the way, uh, we got some new members: Davion Bohannon, <laughs> Roly. Shout out my man, Roly. Became a member today. Uh, also, Cole. Cole World became a member today, too. Shout out all of our new members. And I got a new super chat from some old members. Mo77. He's been a member for four months. He said, Ron. And I think that was in response to um, Steph Curry being better than Kobe Bryant. He sent that in. <laughs> Is that a Luka Dunn? <laughs> Luca to the Lakers? Uh-oh. What? <laughs> that, that's crazy. Lakers just out here pirating everybody's best player, huh? Check them out. Box score watching Wayne said, some rust love in the chat. Top five with this ring? Mmm. I, 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 I told Russell you. Westbrook. We, we, had, we had this conversation before the season started when I asked you, what happens if the Clippers actually pull this off? Like, what kind of conversations are we going to have about certain guys now that you add a championship to their resume. So if you add a championship to Russell Westbrook's resume, who, by the way, already has a pretty good resume, and he's not a scrub. Russ had a triple-double last night, by the way. So you add a championship to Russ's resume, like how are we talking about this dude? You just can't say anything about Westbrook or Harden anymore. Like all of the <laughs> negative claims towards those guys go away because of a championship. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so serious. I'm, I'm speaking about both of them the same way. Yeah, I can't. I can't get with that. Bro. I just can't. Because what I'm saying is, like five months ago, minute per minute, Russ was worth playing. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yo, yo, be, hey, y'all know you could do some good ass hating on Russell Westbrook. For real, Russ do some good ass hating for Russell Westbrook. It ain't me. It's him. I don't think I hate on Russell. Westbrook. I just don't. I just. I, we have this talk every time the ring gets, every time the team wins the ring, we end up having a conversation. What does it mean for this guy's legacy? And I say the same thing every time. I'm gonna just stop answering the questions. Yeah, that, yeah, but if they actually change. beat Denver and they actually beat Boston, that is unheard of, and that means that James Harden turns into 2018 James Harden. Yo, you but just Jack, made that Jack, up. That doesn't you, mean that. You just, have, you just, yeah, you yeah. Just I threw it up. my imaginary that world. I cooked it up on the spot and said, "Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, put." But I'm saying, though, Chill Town, putting a ring on it, like if she's not wifey material, you put a ring on it. That doesn't make her wifey material. She's just a chick with a ring. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's he, he, he just not a. He, I can't get. But over she's it, a wife, man. though. Right, but he. It, but she's he, a wife, but just, she's still not wifey material. She just got a ring. So are you saying Russ isn't championship material, or he's not a exactly, championship right. caliber point guard? He's exactly. just on a championship team. Exactly. Right. That's what he's exactly. saying. And, and he, he has the benefit. He's saying Patrick McCoy. He's saying Patrick McCoy got a ring. Like. And he's got the and he's got the benefit of being on a championship team. I can say that about a lot of guys that had the benefit of being on a championship team. So I mean, why 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 does Russ have to suffer because of that? You know, I got lucky I think, enough. Yeah, to, yeah, I think Russ is already undoubtedly a top ten point guard to ever play yeah. games. Bro. Like, it's not going to. So if you add a championship to that to that resume, because that's what it's going to be 
when he stops playing. It's not just going to be the eye test. No, it's going to be, well, what did you produce? How good were you? What did you do when you were at your apex? And how good were you when you are? Because Mitch Richmond won a championship. Mitch Richmond was, was at the back of the bench for the Lakers. He was, he, was, he was sitting on the bench for the Lakers. Nobody looks at Mitch Richmond like he's a, the, the third best two guard in the game. But Mitch Richmond during his apex was really damn good. He was really damn good. Russ, on the other hand, he's not at the back of the, the Clippers bench. He's a vital part of what they're trying to do. So it's a little bit different. Jay Kidd and, was a starter, and I never elevated him for winning in 2011. Like, that doesn't hold no weight to me. That's like, mm. where does he rank all time? I think Jason Kidd is a – I don't do lists anymore. But right, he's one of the five best point guards ever to me, probably, with or without the 2011 championship. Mars, you're, you're just – you're above list now? No, it's I. Like, I feel like for me, the order, like the order, is less important than like a the rationale and b. I think when you get to like the top, there's also mm -hmm. close. So it's it's less about the order and more about the tier that they're in. Right. Who are they? Who are they in and around? Instead of saying Duncan is the fourth best player of all time, I just think he's in the tier with Kobe and Shaq and Bird and those guys. Theoretically, now I'm gonna get on my chill town, Mars. Because last year when I said, can we stop doing these top 10s, all these top 10 guys, let's just do tiers. And I'm like, no, you got to put it in order. I need one through 10. Mars, I'm with you on this one, Mars. I'm with you on this one. First sorry, off, I, I do want to say, sorry, chill. Sorry, Ox. You're not the golden child. Second <laughs> off, speaking of top 10s. Sure enough, I could dig that. You will be put on the spot very that. soon. Jack. <laughs> need that. Very oh, soon. We're going we go, we go to MJ LeBron staff. <laughs> no. Before we do that, though, uh, I'm going to go ahead and dive back into these games. We just were speaking about it, so I'm going to start with this game. The Clippers beat up on the Suns last night, 105 to 92. And, yes, Russell Westbrook did have uh, – he turned the clock backs a little bit. He had 16 points, 15 rebounds, and 15 assists. And Damn, in rough fashion, had How many turnovers? Five? That's it? How many, how, how many shots okay, did it Russ? take? How many, how many shots did it take him to get those 16 points? He had 17 shots. He went seven for 17. Uh, that's, that's not what well, no. right? yeah, for Russ. Score. Relentless that's score. I'm so not, not ready for Russ. 17 yeah. shots to get 16 points is bad. But, I, mean, I don't care. No, that's Russell, 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 I just, Mars, I, could, Mars, I, could, Mars, I could go eight for 16 and, and not go to the stripe and get 16 points. I yeah, and that. that's not good. That's not official. How many free throws did he shoot, though? I, I, didn't, shoot, I, I didn't shoot any free no. throws. He, he didn't shoot a free throw. throw. Wait a minute, Mars. I go 17 eight. shots to get 16 that's, points is not official. I go, eight, wait, I go eight for 16 that's and not I get six. I, no. I, I shot 50% from the floor. That's Mars. why I keep trying to tell you field goal percentage is not efficiency. That's inefficient basketball. Wow. If it takes you 16 possessions to score 16 points, that is one point per possession. That would be the worst offense in the NBA. That's not efficient. Being relentless <laughs> is more important than being. And I'm not efficient. saying Russ had a bad game. I never watched the game. I right. never watched the game. I'm not saying Russ had a bad game. I'm just telling right. you 17 points on 16 shots. No, 16 <laughs> points on 17 shots is not efficient basketball. I'm that doesn't take away from how well he played because I don't know how well he played. I'm, I'm just thinking about the box it. score merchant, the, the box score merchant that I am. I like yep. that for us. That's dope. I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at I'm it. Saying. I'm looking at what you just said, Mars. I'm looking at it from the aspect of how I got that. Like, I might have got two wide open layups in transition. I might, I, I was able to knock down an open jump shot. Um, I got another wide open layup in the third quarter. So I was actually pretty efficient. Making yeah, 16 the, shots. Yeah, that's the makes. You you spoke about his two layups in transition, the one open right. jump shot, the another layup he made in the third quarter. Right. What about what about the 10 missed shots? What were they? Right. I, I missed eight shots. I made eight shots and I missed eight shots. Yeah. You took 16 possessions to score right. 16 points. That's not good. Mm. It might have been I, good in 2000. It's not good in 2020. Right. The league average is 1.17 points per possession. If you score right. one point per possession, that's bad. Efficiency wise, that's bad. So now Russ might have had a great game. Never watched right. the game once again. I'm just telling you the objective truth about how efficiency works. Russ did not score the basketball efficiently. That's what I'm saying. I do want to note that the big three for the Suns had a very mediocre game. They were and that's actually being that's generous. Ten at the end of the first quarter. No one watched the rest of the game. I don't even know how they came close, to be honest. Well, that they so all KD played 40 minutes. Bradley Bill played 39 minutes. Devin Booker played 40 minutes. 
KD had 21 on 8 for 22. Bradley Bill had 19. Shot fairly well. And Devin Booker put on probably one of the worst performances of his career. In 40 minutes, he had 12 points and went 1 of 11. It was down 30 in the first quarter, right? Elimination game, Devin Booker? W. They was down 30 I did, in the first I did, I did check in like back in the fourth quarter because I think the score was like they were like within like nine or something. So I was like, hmm, right. how'd they come back? And then I checked back into the game and then they just started losing again. Like they just got cooked again. So I was like, okay, maybe me watching the game was the bad luck. Because however they did to come close, I started watching, they just folded again. That wasn't great. But oh man, that's like that's like when watching watching the game with my mom, and I was like, I used to hate that. I used to hate that. What like, for real? She be watching the game, they start losing, but like I gotta turn it, I gotta turn it. And then turn it back, and then when they start, but they start losing again. She's like, I can't watch, I can't watch. I'm watching this while they're losing. I'm trying to watch the damn game. <laughs> yeah, Give me the ball, mom. What's back doing? <laughs> Superstitious ass. Man, let me watch the basketball game. <laughs> All right, y'all. Keep it in lit. The next game we got is the Indiana Pacers versus the Toronto Raptors. And the Pacers won 140 to 123. Wasn't much to see here. Just a nice, smooth 30 piece from Tyrese. 40. 140. Them dudes run the score up. That's why they that's weren't not a that good in the first half. And I, I never watched the second half, so I don't know what happened, but they ended up just blowing the game wide open. Mm. Yeah. Mars, Tyrese Halliburton happened. Mars, I probably watched a handful of, of Toronto games. When I say a handful, less than less than five. Like I might have watched maybe two or three Toronto Raptors games. So I don't really know what's going on in Toronto, what they're doing. I keep hearing quickly's actually looking really good. I, I keep hearing that uh, Scotty Bonds, I, I don't know what they're doing up in Toronto. I think they're trying to build that unit around Barrett and, and Scotty Bonds, but that's as far as I know. I don't I don't know what else they're doing up there, none. I haven't watched 80 Raptors games, obviously, but when I do watch them like periodically through the season, and since they've got RJ Barrett, I don't. I don't think the record is what shows what's going on in Toronto. Like, I don't think they're not trying to win, especially once Scotty Barnes went down. That's not the aim. I think their aim is to develop players. And RJ Barrett looks better now than he did in New York, like already. And he's only been there for like two months. He he looks better. Scotty Barnes looks like he's developing. Um, Grady during his course of the season, you can see he's developing in terms of making reads out the pick and roll and like understanding the game and all of those things. I think that's what, I don't know much about their coach, Darko, I can't say his name. I'm sorry, I haven't bothered to learn to pronounce it. My fault. Him, he seems to be a good player development coach. Like his players are genuinely improving with him there, which I think is what Toronto is looking for. How can they develop guys? And I think they're developing players very well. Now they're like, they've lost like 7,000 games in a row until that box game but development wise i think he's doing a very good job <coughs> but i'll go to any people who actually watch the raptors more than i do jamaica's ross clock choice said nah talk about how the suns only scored 10 in the first and six of them were free throws they made two shots it was it was a, it was if i'm not mistaken because i did tune into that for a couple of minutes and they were down I think it was maybe two minutes left in the first quarter. They only had four points. Mm -hmm. And then everything yeah. else was three throws, yep. Yeah, they only had four points with, with two minutes left in the, in, in the first quarter. They were two for 19. Garbage. That's get inefficient. The, get, who doesn't know? Inefficient. Get, yes. get Phoenix off my TV. Get them out of here. They trash. The next game went into double overtime. The Miami Heat was down in Atlanta. And the Heat pulled it off 117 to 111. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a lot of minutes played this game. Yep. Bam Adebayo played 48. Tyler Hero played 48. Jimmy Butler played 44. And they Dejounte needed all played 49. They needed all of them. Bogey played 45. And some of the stat lines was Tyler Hero came came away with 33 points. Jimmy Butler had 25, 8, 9. Few steals. On the other end, Dejounte Murray had a triple-double. 29 points, 13 assists, 13 yeah. rebounds. That but, might be chucking. But... To get 29 points, he shot 31 shots. He be the same thing. He did the same thing. <clears throat> did the same thing when they played the Celtics when he had 44. What he took 40, 40 something shots, 44 <laughs> shots for 44 points. Yeah, he did the same thing. Hey, let Kobe, will be, Kobe will be proud. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. watching Devontae without Trey Young. That offense is very interesting. And this is very interesting. but but what, 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 what you just said, why is it ridiculous to think? With what Joel Embiid has been doing coming back, even though he looks gassed, 
in a one-game playoff, why is it ridiculous to think that the Philadelphia 76ers can beat Miami? We just saw them in a dogfight against Atlanta last night. A straight dogfight. Is it ridiculous to think that Miami could miss the playoffs? No. I mean, they nearly, missed, they nearly missed it last year. They were, are we forgetting? They were down in that Bulls game in the fourth quarter, and then they came back. The second playing game, they were losing to the Chicago Bulls. They were, they were like five minutes away from going home and then ended up making the playoffs and going to the finals. Like, there's a big swing for what Miami can do. They can miss the playoffs. It's not out of the realm of possibility. But then they can make the playoffs and then beat everyone in the East. Like, it's just, Miami's weird. Why is why is Tyler Hero taking 25 shots and everyone else is in the 14 shot range? Like Jimmy Butler 14 shots compared to Tyler Hero's 25. That does that switch once we get to the playoffs? Does it flip flop? No. Nope. The Hero's firing all, on all cylinders, but it looks like Butler's production, I mean, that's pretty efficient 25 points on 14 shots, but I'm struggling to understand when Jimmy Butler truly turns it on. When he feels like it. <laughs> and doesn't keep weird. it on. He doesn't Jimmy doesn't impact the game based on his scoring. Or or at least that's what I think that he thinks. I don't think Jimmy comes out here like I have to score 30 tonight for us to win. Because it'd be weird. It'd be nights where it's like, yo, Jimmy, I would expect you to come out and be very aggressive. And he's just not. He's deferring to Bam. He's deferring to Tyler. It'd be some nights where, he, like back in the past, he were he would defer to Kyle Lowry or Goran Dragic or whoever. Like he he's liable to come out and defer to Terry Rozier. And then I don't know when 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 it gets down to the clutch. Sometimes sometimes Jimmy would be like, okay, give me the ball. I'm I'm ready to go. Or he'll start feeling it. But you you just never know with Jimmy Butler. Sometimes he wants to be aggressive. Sometimes he just wants to play team basketball. Yeah, I don't know. I I think as soon as the playoffs start, and I saw it firsthand in game six two years ago when we had to go back to Miami to get it done, and we eventually did and went to the finals. But that game six performance from Jimmy Butler when I think he went for like 48 or some crazy mm -hmm. thing like that, that was one of those where you knew Butler had to do that, and he did it, um, and there was no stopping that. So that's the one thing that scares everybody, I guess. Scott Holder sent through a super chat and said, did we get the best Kobe? Question mark. His 2003 was better than 2006. Plus, had better stats except scoring, better playmaker, game came easy. 2006 plus played with a huge chip, obviously, plus forced everything. Think we lost that one. I think the elephant was that he had Shaq. No, he had Shaq and he had Shaq and well, Shaq 03 is the year where Shaq was dealing with the foot injuries and Kobe kind of had to take a larger role. Right. Um, he had he had Shaq in 01 and 02, but it was just different. So 03, is he, is he, is he just talking about 03 or is he talking about just the he's early he said 03, 03 is the best version of Kobe, is what he said. The years prior, I think Kobe was a worse player than he was in 03. And then the years are 03 is like, I think hot take 03 is the last year where I think Kobe was elite on both sides of the ball. What year? 03. I think that's the last year he was elite on both sides of the ball. I think he was a good defender after that, but elite, I think 03 is the last year. I think he was on both sides. I don't think he was elite in 06. I don't. I think but, he was a but, good And the people who are going to tell me about all those all defensive teams he made, I mean, good for you. But the last time I think he was elite I'm, on both sides. I'm with, those, I'm with those people. I think Cobb was a hell of a defender. In the, in the, I think it was more situational post 03. I think it was definitely more situational. I think he could turn it on and go back to being an elite on ball perimeter defender and he could slow down most people at the point of attack. But 03, I think, is when he was at his more consistent, strong, elite, positive defense all throughout mm. the season through the playoffs. I think he ended up having to pick and choose his moments more often uh, after that. Actually, Mark, I think it, the, 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 I, I think it was the 01, Brian. I think that that was I think that was the best version of him defensively. Because oh, I, I agree see, with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, well, I, 2000. I think, I, I think it's 01. I was because I'm looking at what the Lakers did defensively. I mean, they weren't a great defensive team, but him playing off the ball, which he wasn't very good off the ball, but he was more conscious off the ball at that time. He was really good in the passing lanes. He was good around. He was really good getting around screens, and he was a damn good rebounder at that time too. And in terms of him being a one-on-one -on -one player, his hands were busier. Not only were his hands busier, him closing out on guys and staying in front of guys like Doug Christie, right? Like, uh, let's see, who else was running around during that time? And, and the two-guard spot, 
the two guard spot was really good, but in the playoffs, I'm thinking about the playoffs particularly. Guys like Bonzi Wells, uh, Doug Christie, like he did a really good job on those guys and slowing those guys down. And I think I feel like he was a lot smarter at that particular time. I feel like when he got when we got past 2003, like when we got to like 2005, 2006, a lot of the stuff that he was doing was just off instinct. It wasn't just because he was just better. It was mo it was mostly off instinct. His off ball defense also regressed from like five onwards. It was just not very good. <clears throat> so yeah, no knock to Kobe. I just think I mean he came into the league, he was right so and like 98, 99. I think he became a very good defender. 2000, I think, is where I was at his best. And then 01 was very, very good. 02, 03, I think he was still an elite defender. 04, with everything that was going on, I think his defense actually slipped in 04. And then 05 wasn't very good, in my opinion. 06, I think he was a good defender in moments, like elite in moments, relatively like a positive. 07, 08, similar thing. 09, 10, 11, 12, I just think he was... He was over at that point. Yeah, I think he was just mid. Yeah. Well, not, not, going, not going all the way to 9, 10, 11. So maybe his defense might have been lesser, but I still think he was elite on the defensive end. You know, Do you think he was elite consistently, or he could be elite when he wanted to be? Uh, yeah, obviously when he wanted to be, but I think he was still um, a very, very good defender. So flashes throughout. he showed you. So so he showed you flashes of what he used to be, like in two thousand. Uh, he, he showed flashes, but even like when he wasn't just locking down, I think he was still right. a, a plus on defense. Like like I said, he might he might have he might have regressed some, but he right. was still uh, uh, elite in my okay. Okay, Scott, I do want to address something in this super chat. Uh, you said for the first thing, did we get the best Kobe? But just because you think he was better in 2003 than he was in 2006 doesn't mean we didn't get the best Kobe because if 2003 was the best Kobe, then we got the best. Kobe. But I think he's also like, the, the, same, the same way, the same way people say about Shaq, did we get like what the best of what Shaq could have been? I think he's saying, could Kobe have been better? Is I think is what he's saying. Um, so what if 2003 would have played by itself? Maybe if 2003 stayed for longer, if you got to see that develop more instead of him having to go into more of his like scoring at all time levels, but you kind of neglect some of the playmaking and the defense falls off some. What if we got 03 Kobe with that scoring load along with the playmaking, the passing, and the defense for an extended period of time? So if, if him and Shaq would have stayed together longer, essentially, the way we talk about him now, maybe, we, maybe that's we, what it is. we wouldn't be talking about him the way we talk about him now. If, if him and Shaq stayed together, because he would have never taken a back seat to Brian. We would have never seen him like we see him today. He had to get away from Shaq. That's the only way we were going to see him the way we see him now. Also, too, though, Chill, like, he, <clears throat> either way it goes, those those three championship runs, yeah, and even the one that they lost, Kobe right. was a hell of a good player next to Shaq. Awesome. Absolutely like, fantastic. So Kobe was a 30-point-per-game scorer. The only people who say he got carried never watched the playoffs. Never. Never watch the playoffs. They just see Shaq got finals MVPs and say he got carried. That's cool. You just ignore them. I'm going to be honest. And then uh, also you said uh, 2006 plus, uh, he forced everything and, you know, he played with a huge chip and all of that. And then you said before he was a better playmaker and uh, the game came easier. That kind of just goes to what Ox was saying, though. Like, And I said this all the time. When you play with better players, the game's going to be easier. I'll use Jason Tatum, for instance. If Jalen Brown and Derek White come off that team and it's just him and Drew Holiday, things look a little different because he has to play make more. He has to force more. He has to overcompensate for all the things that they lost. So the, the, the last couple championships when he was – and they had a good team, but they just weren't the, the three-peat Lakers. So he had he had to obviously do more. He had to score more. He was asked to, asked to do this. He was They relied on him to do certain things. Whereas when you have Shaq, the game, especially Shaq, game is so much easier. Like when 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 things get rough and the going gets tough, give the ball to Shaq. When it's a close game, give the ball to Shaq. When I don't know what else to do, give the ball to Shaq. It's a good option to have. It is a very good option. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't complain. Yeah, I wouldn't complain. <laughs> All right. Uh, on to the next game. Huh? What do you know? The best team in the NBA, record-wise at least, the Boston Celtics lost to the Milwaukee Bucks last night, one hundred four yep. to ninety-one. They were missing Porzingis though, so we we we, we and, can't and, say and that. Al Horford and Al Horford. and Al Horford, and no Porzingis, Al. no Al Horford, and Giannis did get injured in the game as well, mm -hmm. suffered a calf calf injury. 
But yeah. talk to me about this game, you guys. I know, chill. You watched it on play. Oh, you didn't watch it on playback. You yeah, watched the Lakers. Yeah. Right. But I did see game, it though. I, 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 I did watch it. It in the first quarter when Brooke Lopez made seven thousand threes. Seven of them. <laughs> yeah. Brooke, Brooke Lopez was hitting every three that could possibly be made. That that kind of killed things. Also, no free throws. Like that's the, in my opinion, that's the biggest right. takeaway from the game. No one was getting free throws. Like I don't think this game is an indica- is an indicator of anything. Like in the postseason, like when are you going to ever see a game with two free throws? Ever. Not only that, Mars, and, and, to, and to add to your point, when you have things that don't normally happen. So over the last four games, they haven't shot the basketball like they did. To have Pat Beverly come off the bench and crack five threes, we ain't prepared for that. That's not going to yeah. happen throughout so the Pat course. Pat Beverly of the- started last night. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, him starting last night and cracking five threes. We're not prepared for that. He was wide open on three of them. I remember seeing three of them that he was wide open. Pat Beverly is the double team man. And if he's knocking down threes, Brooke Lopez is knocking down threes. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with the Golden State Warriors. When Golden State shoots and makes 27 threes, I don't care who you put in front of them. You're not beating them. If you do something that's hard to replicate, like it's hard for me to like really take it with more than a grain of salt. Like shout out to like we're gonna get to the Warriors game. Shout out to the Warriors for handling business. Shout out to them for winning. But if you shoot sixty three percent from three and you make twenty six, it's not a recipe for repeatable success. It's not. So it's like not. credit for the win. Over eighty two games, a team can get hot, make a bunch of threes. Shout out to you guys. Hey. Same thing with this game. Like a game with two free throws, like, that's never gonna happen again. So it's hard for me to be like, oh, this is how you beat the the Celtics or whatever the case. Now the Celtics shot poorly from three, which right. that is the recipe. You get them to to miss a bunch of threes. Now, do I think it was because of great Bucks defense? Not necessarily. Some of it, yeah. Not all of it. So I think I think it's just a good win for the Bucks. Shout out to them and hope Giannis is okay. But I don't think it's proof of anything more going forward. I would like to hear from the Celtics fan up here on what happened. I feel like I've kind of been in get me to the playoffs mode for quite some time now. I feel like ever since we beat Golden State by 51 points, it was like, all right, this is our championship. Nobody can stop us. Let's get Denver in the finals and, you know, have a great time. But cruise through the East, do it the right way, get to the finals. But I need the playoffs to come right now. I'm tired of this regular season basketball. I'm just ready for, you know, the the stars to give it their all for every player to for me to turn on the game and understand that we're going to get everyone's best and it's it's going to be beautiful playoff basketball. The game of basketball is like at an all time high right now in terms of talent in the league, which is why I don't think we've ever seen the, the, the league be at such a high talent in terms of like the top 10 players in the league kind of all being first ballot Hall of Famers, right? And then the list goes on, 10 to 20 could could be top five players in any given year. So the playoffs are going to be the best they've ever been, I think, and it'll be fun to see what teams can try and contest Denver and Boston. So that's my answer about Milwaukee versus Boston and how I had zero interest in what the result of the game was, and ultimately the playoffs are, are around the corner. Sure you didn't, Jack. Sure, you didn't have zero interest. Sure, Mars, you didn't you care it. about the game. Chill. Sure, Mars. They shot zero. I did not. I watched the first so, quarter, and then I went so straight to the actual game that mattered. So it's not a real indicator because they shot zero free throws. Well, I have you know, the last time we beat them chumps up in Boston, they shot 30 free throws. We beat them that game. Last night, they shot two free throws. We beat them that game. I think it's a clear indicator that we could play Boston's ball however they want to play, mm-hmm. and we could serve them suckers. Right. That's what I think. Also, yeah, too... Also, shout out Doc Rivers. Making playoff adjustments, man. Hey, need to put the battery in my man Pat Beverly's back. We ready to rock. Now. What was the playoff adjustment putting Malik Beasley on the bench? The is playoff that, adjustment in the exactly. regular season? Exactly. I, I'm, I'm saying, like, all we need to do is get Beasley out the way. Get Pat Bev some more minutes. I think we ready to rock and roll now. I, I think that was the minor adjustment that we needed. Get Pat Beverly some more minutes. Yep. I, I don't know if the if the if the Milwaukee Bucks have shot as well as they shot yesterday. I don't know if they they've shot that good at the long ball line all season. And I, I know that they've made some threes, and I know that they've stretched the defense, but I don't know if they shot that good. And I will take every day and twice on Sunday. I will take Pat Beverly cracking eight threes every night. Knock yourself out, brother. You can do that. And if we're gonna lose. With you shooting eight threes, he didn't have at it. Four for eight's not 
crazy and, to have and, you, and matter of fact, not 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 just four for eight. Ron, take nine of them. Take ten of them. Knock yourself out, brother. I you can shoot that. You can shoot that all night. And if we're gonna lose, if we're gonna lose with you shooting that, we're moving on. Because I'm I'm pretty confident that you can't continue to duplicate that. You will be the double team man. You will be the guy that we consistently leave open. You will be the guy that we're daring to shoot that in the third and in the fourth quarter. And you're gonna have to make that. And all of that defense that you have, all of that defense that you have works in certain situations. It doesn't work throughout the course of a seven game series. No, it doesn't. I'm just trying to figure out how this game means nothing. The two top teams in the two top teams in the East. Mm -mm. I didn't say that. The regular season matters. The regular season has always mattered to me. From us just from a psychological edge, the regular season matters. And to play the to play the Milwaukee Bucks and lose to them by 50 like they did, to lose to them by, by I think it was 40 like they 40 or 50, something like that. So to lose to them like that, that's definitely a psychological advantage from Milwaukee's perspective. Like, yo, we can we can hang with these dudes. We can definitely hang with these dudes. But also when we get into a playoff setting, and now you guys have to make open shots consistently. And not only do you have to make shots consistently, you got to see us night in and night out, and you got to adjust to our adjustments. So we may jab at, 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 at Pat Beverly. We may continue to leave Pat Beverly open. We may make Middleton now guard more. We may make Middleton score a little bit more, who looks like a shell of himself, by the way. But throughout the course of a seven-game series, we may make him do a lot of things that he doesn't want to do. So I'm not saying that it doesn't matter, Ron. I'm not saying that that game doesn't matter because from a psychological standpoint, I think it does. What I will say, though, is I can't see them dudes four times in a week dropping the Celtics. I can't see them. Yeah, and I'll I'll kind of follow up with this, the, the fact that Jalen Brown had 14 points. He was 0 for 6 from 3. That ain't happening. He Jalen Brown has been phenomenal in the last couple of months, and he had an off night, right? You also don't have Chris Stapps. Um, Derek White, nine points. Jason Tatum, 22 points. They didn't, it doesn't look, I'm not a stats guy, but I didn't watch the game because I'm ready for the playoffs. And just from looking at the stats, this Celtics team did not give their all and they weren't actually trying to win this game. They, did, they didn't give their all or they just didn't feel like playing because they, they didn't give it. They wanted to get home and play Call look, of Duty. Looking at this, looking at this makes me more confident in the Celtics when they're at full strength and in the playoffs against Milwaukee. Cookies. What kind of cookies? Oatmeal raisin? Chocolate chip. <laughs> Snicker Chocolate noodle. Chip. Uh, well, well, I have and, a question. I have a question, though. Was Jason Tatum at any point last night, did you feel like he was forcing it, ever trying to force any shots? Because to me, when I look at this stat line, Chris Stapps is out. They're not at full strength. Was Drew Holiday even in the lineup? Yeah, yeah he was. In. Yeah, he was in there. But uh, Chris Stapps not in there. You would expect Tatum to be like, "All right, I'm going to try and force this. I'm going to play a bigger role. I'm going to try and score more points." I almost like the fact that Tatum just stayed with what he's been doing all season long. Four and nine from three, nine and nineteen. I expect Tatum to be in that twenty-two to twenty-five shots during the playoffs. But for him to not try and force things. That's where Jack, I he shot 19 shots and he played 37 minutes. He played the most minutes in the game. I would rather I would want him to sh shoot the ball 37 times if he plays that amount of minutes. So why didn't he? And this is well, 37 shots is insane. Nobody Chris Nobody Chris 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 or Zingis is that and they, he just didn't want to try and change his role three games before the playoffs start. The flow of the game didn't dictate. 30 short attempts from anyone. That's just like right. But like Boston don't need these wins. Like they yes. don't need to do these crazy things to win these games. They don't mm -hmm. need to. Mark, I understand yeah. they don't need the win. I, I understand they're gonna finish number one no matter what. I understand nobody's overthrowing them. I understand as of right now, they were the best regular season team. Okay, okay, I do get that. But do you think that that is a cause for concern where just because we don't need to win, but Jason Tatum, you play 37 minutes and you're just going through the motion. Drew Holiday, you play 30 plus minutes and you're ineffective. Derek White, you, you're playing all these minutes and 
you're not balling. Giannis isn't in the game. You guys still Whoa. aren't playing up to par. Jalen no, Brown, they, you've been, bro, you've been killing this that. whole time, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you just decided to lay down. So you think bro, those guys all decided to? No. They, they got in a team huddle no. and said, "Look, guys, we're gonna play thirty minutes tonight, but we're not gonna try." We're gonna go out I, there. I'm never saying they didn't and try. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm basing you know this off of We're not gonna play defense, 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 defense tonight. Let's no, see no, if I'm, Damian no, Lillard no, no, go no, for no, fifth. No one said no. any of that. I'm basing no, this on a, I, you might have watched the whole game. I didn't. Chill, I think, did watch the whole game. I'm basing this on my small subsection of the game. Jason Tatum wasn't going through the motions, he was just playing Celtics basketball. Yeah. You get a pick and roll, you drive. If, if there's help, you kick. Right. If there's not help, then you try to take it all the way. He got stuffed by Brooke Lopez on one of his drives. I've seen it. He took a nice little mid-range elbow jumper when it presented itself. He took a three, um, I think, on Chris Middleton. He made that one. Like, he's just playing basketball. It's not like, it's not where, oh, uh, this isn't working, so we got to adjust this so that we can counter what they're doing in this situation. It's not that serious. Like, that's what I'm saying when I say it's not that serious. I'm not saying he's going through the motions or not trying to win the game. But what I am saying is we're losing this game. Jason Tatum doesn't need to go, oh, let me just go ISO, hezzy tween, step back, take 26 shots. Do you think there's a different gear, though, when you get to the playoffs, these players kind of turn it on a notch? I think they can can play play with more purpose. I think they play with with less purpose in terms of their driving kick. It's more more just, oh, okay, if this guy holds, we're going to kick it, we're going to swing, blah, blah, blah. Now, we we need to get this guy an open shot, so how can we manipulate this guy so he can help, so we can get Drew Holiday this corner three right here. That's it's gonna be more. It's gonna be more. Um, what's the word? More deliberate. That's what it's mm-hmm. gonna be. It's more more deliberate. But they're not going through the motions. That but they are playing basketball. They don't and Ron, have don't to think, win these games. It's not and Ron, game. don't think for one second that these guys aren't doing their homework on Milwaukee. It's not like they're just looking at Milwaukee like whatever. No, we're probably gonna have to see these guys in the playoffs. So we're seeing these guys in the playoffs. We got to pay attention to how they run the offense. We got to pay attention to switching action. We got to pay attention to how they defend, and we got to take advantage of that stuff. Plus. What he did a couple of nights ago when they ended up beating Sacramento, Missoula's doing the same thing with these second unit guys. I got to get these guys minutes, and I got to get these guys on the floor because these guys are going to be a big part of what we're trying to do, which is win. So <laughs> he did not give no set. Nothing changed with Boston. He did, did Joe Missoula did not dig into the end of his bench like, here, guys, let's get some end of the season minutes because we might need you in the playoffs. Jason Tatum played 37 minutes. Drew Holiday played 32 Jalen Brown played 36 minutes. And this is what I'll give you guys. And we can just leave it at this. If you're just saying they had an off night and it was just a lid on the hoop, okay, cool. But anything other than that, they got their asses kicked. Mm. Okay. I won't argue that, but they did. He did dig dig into his minutes. Sam Hauser, he played almost 30 minutes last night. Pritchard played almost 25 minutes last night. Luke Cornett played over 20 minutes last night. Malachi, he played a couple of minutes. Reset, he also played a couple of minutes. So he definitely dug into his bench last night. Yes, he did. What I do want to say, though, too, is as nasty as I'm being, I will give you guys the benefit of the doubt. Simply because there was no Al Horford or no Porzingis. And I would be lying if I was to say that those two don't hold strong implications on how you guys play, especially Huge. versus one of the biggest teams in the league, the Milwaukee Bucks. Huge, right? Luke Lopez has his way against Xavier Tillman, and he has his way against Luke Cornett whenever he wants to. And then, obviously, Giannis is going to do what he does. Bobby Bobby Portis, he doesn't fear those guys either. Right. He's going he's gonna to come in and have a field day as well. So I will give you that. Hmm. But, all right, we got some more Super Chat. So let's go. You know what? I'll read a super chat or two. I'll read a super chat or two. We got more games we got to get to, though, y'all. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned. Uh, Andrew G said, I'm tired of some Celtics fans saying that Tatum might be better than the Paul Pierce. Do people know what, what he would do today? We would be working on a three-peat right now if we had Paul Pierce. Top five today. Okay. Okay. So um, the first thing five, on, nine, but... when you look at the last five years of champions, where would Jason Tatum have won a championship? It, it, this is his year. He might have had a chance. It, it, it was on the team. team has not beaten the Lakers in 2020. They it's not. 2022. That's the year they 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 could have. Uh, yes, that's and that was Stephen Curry's best and most accomplished. And everyone views that fourth championship for Stephen Curry as his most accomplished championship, right? So that's Steph's. Jokic got it. Giannis got it. Where would Jason Tatum have won? That first championship, it's in 2024, and people are trying to force the fact that 
it would have been last year or the year before or the year before that. No, guys got to get theirs. And this is Tatum's year. They not beating the Lakers in 2020. They not getting past Milwaukee in 2021 with Jalen Brown, who, by the way, that was the first year that he averaged 20 a game. Jalen Brown was hurt. And he was hurt on top of that. So they not beating them. In 2022, they got to the finals. And, Mars, you already know that I'm on record. That Steph Curry made it clear that I will lose to Kawhi Leonard. I will lose to LeBron James. I'm not losing to you. You're not ready yet. So I'm not losing to you. And then last year, I mean, I, I think Denver was the most complete team in the league. And I, I, I'm not sure. This year, there is nothing that they don't have in order to win the NBA championship. Everything that's necessary to win it, they have it. Everything. The Tribe once said, so when Boston loses in the second or third round because of poor offensive execution in the fourth, then what? Will they fire the coach? Do they trade for younger pieces to fill the bench? What happens? Uh, they, if they fail this year, they fire the coach. But I, I'm not even considering that. To me, that's one thing you don't do, though. Like, Boston is so good. I run it completely back. I don't, when, I don't, so I, the I don't mad at Joe. I don't, I don't try to overreact and trade Jalen Brown. I don't, I don't think that Jalen, Jalen, Jason Tatum all of a sudden isn't our number one. I don't think that Porzingis and Drew weren't the right pieces. I think you guys have a perfectly constructed roster. If you do anything, it's the coach because I'll point to the play against the Hawks a few weeks ago when there was six seconds left at the end of regulation and Tatum mm -hmm. takes a fade away three-pointer double teamed four shot at the buzzer there was really no play constructed on that and it might have just been hey Tatum get the ball and do your thing which is fine it, it might work half half of the time but I remember when Brad Stevens was the coach and they would be playing Philadelphia in a big game and Al Horford would get a, a you know screen a dude and then slip under and he would get a wide open layup at the buzzer to win a game it, or Peyton Pritchard or Derek White hits a three in the corner it doesn't always have to be Jason Tatum at the buzzer. And I'm the biggest Jason Tatum fan on earth. I, I love that. I I live life to witness Jason Tatum take those shots. But at the same time, it's okay to have a draw up play. And I don't know if Missoula has full control of the guys to full draw control up or like coach that. and playbook to even draw something up like that. Those are the questions that I need answered during this year's playoffs because I didn't have them answered last year. So fire fire Joe. And hire who? Do you have any? I'm just saying the only thing they would do is fire Joe. If if everything goes wrong, if they Ron, don't, don't, bro. Oh, <laughs> don't, don't, bro. God damn, boys. Might be on the show. <laughs> but you guys know I absolutely despise Mike D'Antoni. I, I think the only person I, I don't like more than D'Antoni in this whole basketball world is James Harden. And it's a culmination of both of them together. Ron, Why are we talking about Mike D'Antoni no, right no, no. now? Check it out, though, Ox. Ron, Check he's 70 years. Ron, please don't. Don't, Ron. Ron. Popovich is 70 years old. I don't care if he was 40 years old. Please, Ron, don't. All right, but D'Antoni just check me out, though. Just, just, just no, hear me Ron, out. No, Ron, I'm not entertaining you with this, Ron. Yo, no. chill. But you got to you gotta look. The individual defenders that they have over there, like, you got the defense already, like, you don't gotta teach Drew Holiday Mark, how to play defense. This, He's gonna play defense. This stuff on purpose, Mark. You don't gotta teach Derek White how to play defense. He's gonna play Mark, defense. I've been told Jason Tatum is. Just sit there at the I've been told Jason Tatum is the best three and D guy in the league. Jack Nobody Brown. told you that. You gotta convince me. See, you're thinking. <laughs> oh my God! Thank you. So look, look I'm saying you get the Antonio nope, in there. Thank you. you can't take it from him. Listen, you I love the Antonio. We Chris Paul too. I don't know. I don't know. I don't get what's wrong with Mike D'Antoni. I don't, I don't either. Hey, real, quick, real, quick, real, quick, real, real quick, real quick. What's up? Real quick. I'm not sure. Let's, let's get right. Sure, that's goofy, that's goofy logic. His style of play is outdated, Moss. That's what's wrong with him. Not only that, he's just a terrible Mike coach. Mike D'Antoni is an offensive genius. <laughs> he's just a terrible he is an offensive he's genius. No, I'm, no, I'm, not, I'm not talking about Mike D'Antoni. I'm not talking about Mike D'Antoni. I'm talking about Yeah, I know, I know, I know. His style of play is outdated, Mars. He is a punch drunk boxer. I think I could hit you more than I could stop. That, you I'm sorry. Team. I'm that Houston I, team played defense. I'm they sorry. Played, I, we, they played they minimal played, defense. No, they, they were played, a top 10 defense in the league. Yeah, they were top 10. I think they were sick. 
They were I think they were up. sixth in defense. I'm checking. The 2018 Houston Rockets played defense. And I know for a fact it, they played defense. We, and, that, and, and that that stuff. And Dan Tony doesn't coach defense. I know Houston had a defensive coach. I know it wasn't Dan Tony. And so, so, and and, and when you, you bring that, in a defensive coach, the same thing. Ime Udoka's a defensive guy. You probably need to bring in an offensive coach for which him. we shouldn't have fired. Oh, they don't need to be the coach. coach. They got two holidays here. Why? In Twenty-eight. Well, you still need to coach defense. You need schemes. No, no Houston, Jason Houston, Tatum's the best three and D defender uh, in the league. You don't the Houston need Rockets in twenty eighteen were the sixth best defense in the NBA. You don't okay. just get a sick okay. best defense but with a coach that just doesn't care about defense. And That's an no. old, outdated thing that was made up because of what happens in Phoenix. Where in Phoenix, I can understand. Yes, defense was an article. Right. They put Amari at the five. They said, yeah, you know what? We're going to let you score just so we can right. get out. Like, That's fine. I'm not arguing against that. Right. Mike D'Antoni developed. He, he worried about defense. He had the best defense for Golden State. The way they were switching everything, one through five, making them play ISO. That's the best defense anyone played against Golden State in that whole stretch with KD. So to act like Mike D'Antoni just never adjusted to where the NBA was going is untrue. If he made that finals, that Houston team... Then why is he not around play. anymore, Mars? If that's true, then why is he gone? Because he hasn't won. He, because he hasn't right, won. That's, that's why point. he's not there anymore. But that doesn't that's mean he's a punch drunk this boxer. He didn't win because he ran up against the super team and his best and his second best player got hurt and they missed 27 straight threes. That's why he's not in the league. He was an assistant coach on that Brooklyn Nets team in 2021. And that team fell apart without him in 2022. He was an assistant Wait, what's, on that what's next the, team. Hold on, rewind, Mark. The, the next team okay, in 2021, was uh, Mike D'Antoni was an assistant right. and so was Ime right. Udoka. They look right. drastically different the next year when Ime left and Dan right. Tony left and it was just Steve Nash. There's a right. reason for that because their offense fell off a cliff without Mike, without Mike Dan Tony leading it. Mike Dan Tony has shown three years ago that he still knows how to implement a great competent offensive team. That Brooklyn team had by far the best offense in the NBA when the big three played by far. And that's because Mike Dan Tony is an offensive genius and he has been coaching defense since he got to Houston. That offense, so, that off, all offense, no defense thing died out 15 years ago with D'Antoni. Right. It hasn't now, been true for like 10 sure. years. So right, Mike D'Antoni is a good so with, every, with everything that you just said, Mars, what's the problem in Boston? With everything that you just said? Because I can tell you what the problem No, it's not, Mars. They got one of the it best is. offenses in the league. That's not true. Down the stretch, true. Down the stretch that that not true. They got one of the best offenses in the league. Isolation. And, 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 isolation and what does Mike Tony and, and, and Mike D'Antoni's offense with James Harden is one ball dominant guy, not just one ball dominant guy, mm -hmm. offensive execution with that one ball dominant guy. That with Brooklyn, all the shots. And it wasn't that with Brooklyn. And, it and the reason why it wasn't that with Brooklyn because they had three guys and they still no, couldn't do it. James Harden. James Harden. Harden. James Harden. The, the plays they run to get guys open shots, the ability that Mike D'Antoni has to, to have spacing at the highest level, not just five out and vibes, the ability he uses his, he uses his off ball guys perfect in terms of um, occupying the weak side, which actually holds defenses that you can't help on the strong side with your ball handlers, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, whoever that is, his ability to occupy the weak side and not allow help is what's going to get easy shots at the rim for Boston, which they struggle to generate in the clutch because all they do is end up on running high pick and roll driving kick and you end up having easy help, easy swings and teams are rotating at a high level yeah. in the playoffs. But you can't do that with Mike D'Antoni offense because Mike D'Antoni won't allow you to just have high pick and roll drive and kick. That's not what he does. Mike D'Antoni is excellent offensively. And the biggest struggle Boston have is late game execution. It ends up just devolving. Jason Tatum, here you go. We're not even going to get you a matchup most of the time. We're just going to let you ISO your defender. At least Mike D'Antoni would get matchups. He would get James Harden a switch. He would run that pick and roll and you get Clint Capella going downhill. Whatever you need to do, he's going to get a matchup and he's going to occupy the weak side so that you can't help. That's what Mike D'Antoni is a genius at. And he's been coaching defense since he's got to Houston and their defense was good. You get him a defensive coach, you get Mike D'Antoni, they're going to be a better team than they are with Joe Mazzula. I don't think Mike D'Antoni is a terrible answer. Do I think he is the answer? I don't know. Maybe give someone who hasn't had a job a job. Maybe. Stop recycling the old coaches. I don't have a problem with that. But to act like Mike D'Antoni just doesn't care about defense is just an outdated philosophy, in my opinion. That's my yeah. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. That's I, mean, I, still think there's better. I still think there's better options, but okay, that was cool. Uh, I'm What's pretty, up, Jack? I'm pretty sure this Celtics team has the highest offensive rating in NBA history. So what the hell are we talking about right now? Offensive Every rating. year is the highest well, offensive rating the, in the, NBA the point that's that again, I, that's that's exactly again the point that I was making. The league now is more efficient. The second best the, offense this year is the highest. Mars, you're rating. sitting here. You're sitting here telling me that Mike. You're sitting here telling me that Mike D'Antoni he plays his guys off the basketball really well. When Mike D'Antoni has a five out offense with no action off the basketball. In fact, they got one guy dribbling the ball and James Harden going downhill looking to kick to an open guy. I did, did watch the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Nets. Nets I, I, I did watch the Brooklyn Nets. Yes, I did. I watched the Brooklyn Nets. 
in addition to Houston, who had one of the best offenses. They give the ball to Jake. They give the ball to James Harden, who's throwing the ball between his legs six, seven times and going downhill with four other guys on the That's perimeter. That's because they have yeah, because he he goes to his players. He goes to his players. You have the best isolation player in the league. Yeah, you're gonna run more isolation. But then when he went to Brooklyn, and you had some of the best off ball players in the league. We don't, need, we don't need alongside James isolation. Harden as a point guard. Alongside Kyrie, uh, as long as James Harden is a point guard, then he, he goes to what they have, which is their strengths, which is two off-ball guys. James Harden is a playmaker, primary initiator out of pick and roll. He used that. When he had Steve Nash, it wasn't isolation. It was high pick and roll. It was spread offense. It was, it was the things that catered to Steve Nash. He goes to what his players' strengths are. That's a good thing about a coach. He's not going to use Jason Tatum like he uses... Um, he's not going to use Jason Tatum like he did James Harden because they're different players. Mike D'Antoni has always adjusted to what his players are good at. The only situation where I'd say he didn't was with Paul Gasol in Los no, Angeles. No, Mars, no. That's you're I'd say he didn't no, do that. He's wrong, not good Mars. with bigs. I won't argue against bigs, but with <clears> his guards and his perimeter players, he's Which he has, by the way. This is the same he Mike D'Antoni. This always. is the fellas, same. Fellas, we got to move on. We got to oh. move on. I got some other things that we got to get into. Real quick, real um, quick, Ron. Can I ask a quick question? Not even not even on there. What's up? Real quick. Completely unrelated. I just, I just have to know something's been, it's been really eating at me for like two hours right now. It's been eating at me for like two hours right now. I want to know if y'all know this. In baseball, the third base coach, is he only, for, is the third base coach only for runners? Or do they have a third base coach that's like for the actual third baseman too? Or is it just for the runners? He might have the most important job, actually. The third base coach. Third base coach is telling you, you know, bunt the ball batter. Or he's yeah. telling the guy at first to steal. He is not... Mm -hmm. It, it has so nothing for the third baseman. Has nothing. It's, not, to do with it's not just for the third baseman. Oh, okay. the third base coach is coaching the offense. So there's Yo, no coach for the third baseman on defense. No. Ah. Okay. Okay. The coach what? of the third baseman would be like the shortstop. Ron, this, that's the it's, question it's, that's been this, eating this at you this morning. Been me <laughs> for like three hours, bro. I woke up. Oh, I had about like some relevance for the conversation. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. The third I, base. I, I don't know. You, 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 you don't see. That was the craziest question I've ever heard. Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I just needed to they, know this. Uh, just so you know, Ox, they switch on offense and defense. So the third base coach, he comes out on offense. When his team is off the field, he's off the field too. Okay, okay. So there's no, yeah. so nobody's coaching the baseman. That's just for the runners. So, so if the Mets, so if the Mets are on offense, the third base coach is out there. When they're on defense, he's off. The, he's off the field. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, my bad. Go ahead, Ron. My bad. No, you good. All right, y'all. <laughs> The Knicks and the Bulls played last night. The Bulls won 128 to 117. DeMar DeRozan had 34 and 6, and Jalen Brunson continued his dominant streak right now with 45 points and eight assists. I'm, you know who the Bulls are? You, you know that chick that's outside the club that thinks she, she should be behind the velvet rope still? Like, she's really not like that no more. But she's at the door, like, why can't I get in? What's the problem with me? Because you ain't what you used to be. I'm so sick of talking about the Bulls, man. I swear. I'm so sick of people talking to me about, yo, why aren't we this? Why aren't we that? Number one, you have no direction whatsoever. There's no franchise player. There's nobody that you're building this unit around. You have no system, nothing on defense. You got a guy in Kobe White who's actually turning into what he turned into because Lonzo Ball got hurt because that was actually your plan. When he went down, that screwed up everything that you guys were trying to do. Now you got DeMar DeRozan, who's going to be 35 years old, if he's not 35 years old already, and Zach Levine, who was in and out of the lineup, and you have no idea what exactly it is you're doing. Over the last five years, I think the Chicago Bulls have been ninth, 10th, 12th, 9th, and 5th. They're a mid-team at best. I'm over the Chicago Bulls. I'm done. Shout out the Bulls. I haven't uh, seen that one right play of the lob of the glass that Drummond. That's played. indicative to their season, Mars. That's, that's, that's who they are. That's what I've seen. That's indicative to their season. He actually threw the ball off the glass to him. <laughs> Here comes Andre Drummond. What is happening right now with this crew? Yeah, I knew Andre Drummond was low IQ, but that's crazy. That's <laughs> crazy. You're not that All smart. right, so the next game we got is the Houston Rockets beat the Orlando Magics. They got some good old revenge, right, Mars? 118 to 106. I said I said we would get revenge, and Domo was, I wish Domo was here. Oh, yeah, they just going to rest, guys, because the season's over. They got nothing to play for. Like Domo has this obsession with just trying to build losing culture. We're trying to finish the season above 500. We're not going to lose games on purpose. So we are trying to finish the season 42 and 40. That's what we're trying to do. We got, we got to play the Jazz, we got to play the Blazers, and we got to play the Clippers. We're trying to win all three of those games. We're going to try to win all three of those games. And also, I don't see it with Paolo. I, I, I don't see what Domo sees. And that's not me saying he's not going to be good. I think he's going to be a great player. I don't see what he sees. And I need, I'm trying to see what he sees. Not just from last night, just from me that's generally right. watching Orlando. That's I don't I see it. I don't see what Domo sees with Paolo. And, like, I, I don't get it. Like, for me, I still would take Chet number one in a redraft of that draft. 
I still think Chet's the best player in that draft easily. I think he's better than Paolo. Jabari's not better than him. Jabari, I played him last night. But I just, I don't like, I don't get how you can watch Paolo and say, yeah, that's a top 10 player next season. Like, I don't see it. I, I don't fellas, know. fellas, we do got to move on. We can't, we can't harp on this too much. But um, shout out to the Houston Rockets. Uh, also, Fred Van Fleet had a hell of a game last night. Thirty-seven points. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. What's, the, what's the plan with in what, what's, the, what's the plan with Van Fleet moving forward? Uh, are we, are well, next, season, the next, year? next season, he's gonna be there. He's gonna get paid. Then he has a team option, which we are going to decline respectfully. Mm -hmm. And then by that time, hopefully, we have our guard of the future. Whether that's a man, whether we move Jalen Green to the one, which I don't think is a good idea. But or we bring back Fred on a more team friendly deal. One of those three options, or we just go and get another point guard. I don't know. But Fred will be here next season. I'm certain of it. Fred will be there next season. Dylan will be there next season. I don't think any major moves are going to be made, in my opinion. Yo, Chad, I need y'all to do better, Chad. There's no way Morris convinced 80, 48% of y'all that Mike D'Antoni should be the coach of the Celtics. Bro. I don't even Chad, think Mike D'Antoni. I don't do think better, Mike D'Antoni is the best Power option. Points, I just man. think Mike D'Antoni gets disrespected. That's what I'm saying. I don't know who the best option. That. I think the best option is probably a coach who hasn't got an opportunity in the league yet. I, I've had like me, Mark, like me. I've had enough of the NBA recycling the same coaches. It's going to be Mike Budenholz or Doc Rivers. It's just going to be the same guys getting put into the same contending jobs every time they lose again, and then they're going to get fired. It's going to be replaced with another one who just never wins, and you never bring in new coaches. That's my issue. Don't bring in Mike D'Antoni. I don't care. I just think Mike D'Antoni is disrespected. But bring in the new next. Coaches. The next game we got is the Timberwolves and the Wizards. And the Timberwolves obviously beat the Wizards. Don't say, obviously, the they were losing. They came back. Were they? they were losing. Okay. They were getting cooked. And they came back. It's Shout out to the Wizards for putting up a fight. Obvious. But another trend did continue with another player having their best game against the Wizards this year. And it was Anthony Edwards. He dropped his career high of 51 points last night. How are we feeling about this? Two years, Moss. Two years tops. He's going to be the best two guard in the game. Without a second, question, and he's second. and he's going to be the league MVP. Do you think? Would you take? Here. Would you take him or Tatum for the next ten years? Isn't Tatum twenty six? Yeah. Yes, I'm definitely taking. Give me Anthony the twenty two year old. Yeah, I'm definitely taking Anthony Edwards for next, the next seven years. years. Seven years. So, so I, I get Anthony Edwards from twenty two to twenty nine, and Jason Tatum from twenty six. I'll 30. take Anthony Edwards. I'll take Anthony Edwards. Yes, I will. <sighs> I don't know. I don't, I don't think we've seen the best version of Jason Tatum yet. And I don't think we have neither. I don't not a hot take, but like, I think he's just going to consistently be dominant and a presence. The, like the first six years of his career have just been so overlooked what he's been able to do and, and where he's been able to get his team. And he's always in the brightest lights. Right. So I, I expect him to continue to be in the biggest games. And that means that, it's a make or miss league, and if Tatum makes shots, then he's going to win championships, and that's the end of the story. All right, going to be the best two guard in the league, but I get you, Joe. It's cool. The <laughs> last game I'm going to bring up is the Nuggets and the Jazz. The Nuggets beat the Jazz one eleven to ninety five, and Nikola Jokic had twenty eight points, thirteen rebounds, and seven assists. The reason I brought up these last two games is because it's the top two teams in the conference. You have the Minnesota Timberwolves at fifty five mm -hmm. and twenty four. And then you have the Denver Nuggets at 55 and 24. And Chad, you know what's the craziest thing about this whole thing? These two teams play yeah, tonight. Each other, yeah. So I have to ask you guys, and this is with, I wouldn't say all the marbles because it's not the last game of the season, but this has strong implications on who's going to finish first in the West. Mm -hmm. Then you have the Thunder as well. But I got to ask you guys, who wins this game tonight and who finishes number one in the West with three games left? Mm -hmm. I will say Denver's schedule, their last two games compared to Minnesota's, a lot friendlier. Denver have to play the Timberwolves and then the Spurs and the Grizzlies. Good luck. Oh, my. <laughs> whereas, whereas the Timberwolves have to play Denver tonight and then the Hawks and the Suns. So Denver are favorites. I'll just say that. If they win tonight, heavily favored for the one seed. Heavily oh, heavily. okay. And the game's in Denver. And the game's in Denver. So. Okay, so you got a good chance to go 3 0 too. They have. They have, they have to play the Bucks in one of their games. Well, without Giannis, they uh, that, Dame that, without Giannis is like seven and two. Oh, that is true. <laughs> That's very true. Um, but nah, okay. See, they got to finish out in Dallas too. Who knows if Dallas will play? You know, their guys as well. So yeah, I think Denver likely ends up with a one seed. But I am interested to see this game. Both teams on the back to back. 
Jamal Murray has obviously just come back from injury, so how well can he how well can he play in the back to back? Jokic has said this game doesn't mean too much. Anthony Edwards has said this game means a lot. Two completely, oh, yes. two completely different viewpoints. Oh yes. Um I'm interested to see Nas Reed, man. That's what I'm interested to see. Nas Reed. I want to see because Nas Reed's been killing every every team he seems to be playing. So well, the fact that the fact that Cat has now been cleared for five on five, I think that's a big deal for the Minnesota Timberwolves. The fact that we can now get him back in the rotation, get him back in the lineup. Um Anthony Edwards looks like he's in playoff mode. He looks like he's ready to take that step from what he did last year in the playoffs. He looks like he's much better. He looks like he's more aggressive. Um, I got to tell you, dudes, what are we doing in Utah? I'm, I'm, I'm about had it with them, too. I'm sick of the Utah Jazz. And the reason why and the reason why I'm sick of the Jazz is because even though there's not much there, like Walker Kessler, why isn't he playing? What's going on with him? What's the problem in Utah? I don't get it. Spacing, and he's not much of a passer. And Will Hardy likes guys who can play, make, and make decisions at his big man spot. Oh, sorry, right. I don't know if you mean to be muted. Um, that's that's probably the biggest issue. I've seen the way he uses Walker Kessler. It's interesting. Right. I think he's I think he's doing a pretty good job of actually making him viable on offense. But I do think he does have limitations um, offensively. And also, they're trying to keep their pick. They so, are trying to keep their pick. That's my, so, that's my um, yeah, that I think it's protected from top 10. So they're trying, they, they were trying to be competitive, realized there was no action for them in the plane. So now they're trying to get the best odds so they can keep their pick in the top 10. That, that's what they're doing. They're intentionally trying to lose games. Larry Markman could play if they were playing for something right now, yeah. but he's out. They're trying to lose. That, that's all it is. And they're that's developing true. guys like Taylor Hendricks and Bryce Sensible. Really like Taylor Hendricks. Yeah, I, I wanted to see him George. more during the season when it mattered. But that's what they're doing. They're just trying to lose on purpose. So, fellas, the Utah Jazz are an NBA team, but they're not a team that's worthy of our time right now. Unfortunately, no, with all due respect to the Utah Jazz, we have to okay. talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Denver Nuggets. Who's going to win this game tonight? Jack, talk to me. I'm I'm going to pick Minnesota to win the game tonight because I think Anthony Edwards has some something to continue to prove night in and night out off a 50 point game. It's it's like he's just riding the hot hand. I don't think Denver's motive is as driven to win this game compared to Minnesota. I'm actually looking at the fact that Minnesota and Denver could both drop one game here in the final 3. If OKC goes undefeated and they go and 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 Minnesota and Denver lose one game each. Does that put OKC in the one spot? They win the tiebreaker against Denver. Do they win the tiebreaker oh. against Minnesota? I'm not sure. So. They win. Because I I'm think not, all of them sure. could finish with 25 losses. I know for a fact they win the tiebreaker against Denver. I do know that. I'm not sure about Minnesota. I can look that up. But I know that I know that they win the tiebreaker against Denver. If Denver loses tonight, they're in jeopardy of falling to three. Right. And then OKC, Minnesota, <laughs> the Lakers, and, and the Golden State Warriors are smiling if that's the one two seed. I knew he was figuring out a way to make this benefit. You <laughs> All about situations and matchups, baby. I do have the we, 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 we still need that top 10 run. It's, it's coming. Oh, yeah, I'm, sure. I, just, I just need predictions on this game tonight. <laughs> the Warrior, the Warrior, or not the Warriors. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Nuggets. And the Timberwolves, Chill and Ox, talk to me. Who you guys got winning? I think this is a this this is playoff implications. I think Minnesota, the way that they played yesterday, and and being is that is that in Denver or is it? In, it doesn't matter. I think Minnesota. It's, it's in Denver. Got, it's in Denver. It's in Denver. Um, I think Minnesota's going to come out as hot as they possibly can. Jamal Murray actually looked good a couple of nights ago. He looked good last night too. I think Denver beats them tonight at home. I do. Okay. I think Denver they beats got them tonight. I got Minnesota. I got Minnesota. <clears throat> I think Minnesota's better than Denver. Mm. Whoa. Mm. That's not ridiculous. Matchup, it, it, I think it's they match not... up better than anyone in the West. Right. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm thinking about. I think that's the best matchup against Denver. I do. Of all the teams that, that they would have to see. That front line, the perimeter defense, I think that's the best matchup. And Chris Finch is a hell of a coach. I mean, yes, and, Jam and, ja and Jamal is playing, right? 
Yeah, he should be. I don't have a okay. better answer to say. If he's if he's not playing, then easy, easy Minnesota. But if he is playing, I think I still got Minnesota. I think, like I said already, I think Minnesota is better than him. But if, yeah, if Jamal Murray doesn't play because it is a back to back and he's just come back from an injury, so maybe they don't play him. But I'd be curious right. as to why they played him against Utah but not against the Timberwolves. But right, right. Yeah, it's no news about him not playing tonight. So I'm a. I'm a. So Oklahoma City is tied. With, Oklahoma City is tied, the series with this, in, during the season with Minnesota. They lost to them twice and they beat them twice. Mm. Mm. I don't know who I've winning. I. It's all gonna come down. Who really is gonna be? How well does Minnesota f uh, execute offensively? And does Jaden McDaniels make a bunch of threes? Last time they played, they came down to the wire and Jaden McDaniels couldn't miss. Right. Um, I'm more comfortable with Denver winning. I think Denver can play worse and win. I think Minnesota have to play at a higher level to win against Denver than Denver yeah. would have to do against the Timberwolves. So I'll go with the Nuggets for that reason. All right, chat. I need you guys all tapped into this game tonight. It's a lot. This, this is a very important game for for. Play in playoffs, rest of the seat, rest of the regular season. Who finishes first? I need y'all tapped in tonight. We will be talking heavily about this game tomorrow. Um, and yeah, it's another big game tonight, too. The Suns and the Clippers. They play again, they get back again. I get back. I, I don't know. Do y'all got to sit the, the Suns? They, I, I think you have to, you have to come out with the, the Suns, have to get that get back. You have to, like, that's just an obligation. Prior. <laughs> This right. this will show a lot if they if they get beat again like if they get whooped again like, that shows a lot. You guys do know that they lost last night too to the Clippers without Kawhi or yeah James yeah, yeah without James Harden yep. Mm -hmm. No Kawhi Leonard no James Harden nope. and they score and they made two shots in the first quarter yes. You have to get your get back it's mandatory. Devin Booker oh, has yeah. to get his get back. AD has to get his get back. Bradley Bill get back. Grayson Allen get back. Get back. Get back squad that's what they are they're the get back squad today. That's All right, y'all. We'll, we'll talk about that too. I'm gonna go ahead and read a couple super chats, and then Jack, we're getting that top ten. Um, the first one is from Kai. He said, "Cat is doing five on five and should be back for at least game one of the first round via Shams. Did they bring him back too early? Can the Wolves win the West now? You know, if you're hmm. worried about Embiid's conditioning, Cat's right. coming back from the same injury with even less time to ramp up. Right. You gotta be worried about Cat for the same reasons." Now, I understand he has less of an offensive like load than Embiid does. I understand that, but generally, you still have to have the same concerns. But he's also, even if he does have less of a a load offensively, he may arguably be their best offensive player. There's a difference between being their best offensive scorer and their best offensive player. So he's a pretty big deal. And he went out of the lineup. I think on the, I think we had a conversation about this yesterday. I think he went out of the lineup on the seventh. So a little over a month he went out of the lineup. So maybe that injury wasn't as bad as 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 they made it out to be. Did he get, he got surgery? That's what I was going to ask. I don't know if he got surgery. I don't know yeah. if he did either. Because I think I meniscus, meniscus surgery, I'm pretty sure, is six weeks. I'm right. Sure. And he so went out of the lineup. <clears throat> and he went out of the lineup uh, on the 7th of last month. Right. I'm, I'll see weeks, with, though, him, with him in that back first, for game one. Yeah, that, that would be, but that's right on it. I wouldn't play him unless we have to. Like, uh, like, like if I'm them, we play game one. We yep. win, okay? Then you don't play game two. It's like a Luca versus Utah type three. thing. When yeah, he was out against the Jazz, you only was, only play him. Yeah. If, even if you lose game one, I still might not play him game two. If we go down 2 0, just it kind of depends on the matchup. Are the Timberwolves good enough to oh win a playoff series play early, especially considering yeah. with how, this West? With the, well, I don't, well, 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 honest, I don't think they've been losing. <laughs> what, what, I'm, what I'm saying, Mars, is with the way the West is, that's number one. Number two, the way the playoffs is going to be in the first round, how much, how spread out it's going to be in terms of rest. Can they afford to play him one game and then miss a game and then play a game? I think they can do that. They play the Lakers and they do that. They're losing in five games. Yep. Golden State. I said the I Lakers. Think they, I think they smoke Golden State. <laughs> Go ahead, Ron. I'm sorry. Yo, stop acting like those are the only two options. Knock it off, too, Ox, with the Sacramento Kings. I'm sick of y'all. I'm you sick saying? of y'all, too. We, 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 in the same we in the same place as the Warriors and the Lakers. Stop no, you're not. Because well, you're actually, actually above them. You're actually above them. No, because one team has Steph, one team has LeBron, yeah. and the other team doesn't. Yeah, well, okay, but when we see the Lakers, 
know what? You have the month. They have the month's bonus. I'm gonna just. I'm gonna just stop. Yeah, just stop. Yeah, I, I, I would, check the yeah. check the month's book. Check the month's book. Higher than LeBron. So what do we do now? Ox, I would tell everybody in here. All, all 1,250 people, oh, what you, you said about the Kings last night. You can already. Okay, but I ain't going to like that. that. No, so what I said about the Kings? I ain't going to put you on the spot like that. Enough with the ball. Oh, oh, we got want to have chat, a higher yeah. vote than LeBron. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at the stat. I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> we got super chats. Picatron X said, I saw MPJ bust Steph's ass in 1v1. I'm pretty sure Kobe won't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a lot of people that bust Steph's ass at one of his camps, you know. But competition is competition. Yeah, I mean, uh, Steph's just too smooth. He's six eleven. He's ten. MPJ, <laughs> he's just too small. That's why you go. Uh, Eddie Wilson smooth. said, "Bro, y'all have the <laughs> y'all have the Tatum Glazers of all Tatum Glazers on here." <laughs> I wonder how he felt in the 2022 finals watching Steph go against Tatum. Was it bittersweet? Oh yeah. I kind of blacked out for the entire series. I once, I, once I got to that point, it was like that was my dream come true my entire life. And and then <laughs> and then I realized, you know what? This was Steph's to have. And Tatum, it was a learning experience. And he came back stronger than ever. And despite a rolled ankle in game seven last year, we're back this year. And this is our year. I lost a, Yo, I Jack. lost a lot of money on that series, man. Get so your dream scenario, yeah, Jack, I is for the Warriors to come back. No, no. So the actually, Celtics to go again. I want to hear your And shit, then Tatum to get his get back this year on shit. Steph. I honestly, I'm the biggest Jason Tatum fan you'll ever find. And if Golden State gets to the finals, as as much of a blowout as it was in the regular season, Stephen Curry is the Boston Celtics kryptonite. And I'm not so sure Boston wins a series like that. If I'm scared of any team, it's Golden State. Hmm. All right. SMN RNDM said, oh, no, not another Tatum guy. I like this guy until he spoke about Tatum. Just so you, you know. Saying it's the bias against Tatum, Tatum, man. It's the Jack, bias gotta, against Tatum. I got I to deal with this logic on the regular with these people. That's so crazy. whenever I talk you about Tatum. We're the crazy ones. <laughs> Why is everyone so biased against Jason Tatum? And it makes us Tatum guys look absolutely crazy when in reality, nobody else is going to say it. This dude right here, Jack, just so you know, this dude right here. Yeah, this dude right here with the black shirt. He said to me, and I almost had a stroke on national television, that he can name 15 players better than Jason Tatum in today's game. I almost Jack, I didn't say I can name 15 players. I named 15 players. Yeah, I'm you know what's crazy? You, you was real. And you was reading. You know I what's crazy? Oh, game. but Mars, I got more in Inspector Gadget on. You want to know why? Because after the way J Jason or Jalen Brunson has been playing. Here we go. Yeah. Mm. Here we go. Hey, I mean, look. Mm. I just go. think you mm. can. I think you can argue that he's not top ten. That's what I think. I just want. I but, want every watch this segment back in ten years, and everyone's gonna be laughing. Ten years about. is now though. Huh? I mean, years. it doesn't though. change that at the time it was said. It still was. I'm telling you, once crazy. Tatum's career is over, we will look at him like MJ, LeBron, Steph, Kobe, and. Oh, but, but, but we're wrong. But we're wrong. But we're wrong. <laughs> and I'm wrong. Right. Hey, hey, Jack. I'm just glad you got Kareem Abdul Jabbar out of this. Sorry. I ain't doing that. That I'm not. We, doing. We, and we got to keep it pushing, though, y'all. Yeah. LaFlame said Celtics with the most ethical performance in history. I'm still trying to make sense of how you – has that – that's never happened before where a team nah, shot zero. Zero, zero. zero free throws has never happened, and two free throws in a game is the least – Ever? What the hell? The previous record was 11. So you do have that, teams had you refs had you, you refs clearly had the night off because you ain't going to tell me it wasn't no fouls. Half, half that had a chance. You had the night off. Exclusive they, 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 this. They they say that they say the refs get too involved in the games. The refs are trying to prove a point. Like, all right, we'll put these whistles up. Go ahead, play ball. Exclusive excellence with the back-to-back -back super chat. Said to expand on my Tatum imposter super chat. He's a sham because the conversation he's put in, such as MVP or top five, he has no business in. He's dot dot dot. That's part one. A fringe top ten player on a stacked roster where he doesn't have nearly the same load as as other candidates or a majority of past winners keep that same energy in june it will still be true you go as far as your best player takes you okay and it will still be true i don't see luca doing that i don't see okay. Giannis doing it since tatum took him out in a playoff series okay and that's still better than him okay when Tatum wins a ring and they don't, I'll have the and ring. And 
and he yeah and you can have the ring and they'll still be better than him but still gotta have I a guess. different conversation about me though mars there's certain narratives that gotta yeah, you can have down. a different conversation i won't partake there, there ha- i'm not saying that you gotta completely switch up your logic mars but there's certain things that you now have to shut down like like the fact that I couldn't get it done, you gotta get. I've away never, from I've never said he can't get it done. So, so I don't have to switch up. I've never said that. Even in twenty twenty two when they lost, I never said, "Oh, Jason Tatum is not good enough to get it done." I've never said that. Mm-hmm. Okay, a lot, of people, a lot of people have a lot of. people. Yeah. I just speak for myself. I, 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 I pride myself. I pride I'm, myself on speaking for myself. I only speak for my opinion. And, and, Mars, opinion speaks, and, and Jack Mars's logic is Mars is coming strictly from a basketball player. That's Mars. W- that's, w- that, w- that, w- that, that, that's where he's from. That, that's where he's coming from. A basketball player. So, yeah, Luca and Giannis are better. Yes, I'm Win still taking Jason bring. over Luca. Thank you. S M N R and D M said, "Chill. You a hypocrite only if I disagree with your new opinion. If I agree, <laughs> you smart and take information to form opinion. Facts, 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 facts. Oh, that went one in here and out the other. I'm confused." <laughs> I thought I, I, I thought I was bugging out when I heard that. I'm like, wait a minute, am I I'm tripping? Saying, what am what I? The really? hell, what the hell is that even mean? Because when what? you ask why when Ots gets to change his opinion, hey, people just accept it. Right, when I got you that part. Opinion, you get called a hypocrite. He's saying right. people call you a hypocrite when your new opinion doesn't align with their opinion. So you're a hypocrite for switching up. But if your new opinion aligns with their opinion, then you're you're well informed and you take information uh, and change your opinion. So, so nothing means anything. Yeah, basically. it's whether right. or not if you if you agree with me, <laughs> well, I'm I'm me. Yeah, if I'm you agree with regardless. me, your opinion's valid. If you don't agree, your opinion's not valid. Uh, regardless. Jake with the super stuff. chat said, How are you guys feeling about the Mavs versus Clippers part three? Who do you have I'm, winning? I, and in how many games right now? Of all the playoff series, this is the one that I am looking forward to the Ooh, most. Chill. This is, hey, get your popcorn this, ready, boy. This is the one that I am looking forward to the most because I think that there is Daniel Gafford, P.J. Washington, and, and I know this might sound ridiculous to you guys, but uh, but Derek Jones Jr. are going to get unlocked against this Clipper team hmm. off the strength of Luka. Not only off the strength of Luka offensively, but the fact that Jason Kidd takes Derek Jones and makes him – a POA guy. So that's going to speed their game up. That's going to make them even better. I think they smoked the Clippers. Is Derek Jones supposed to be guarding Kawhi in this series? I don't think this Kawhi. I think he's going to deal with James Harden. Okay, okay, cool. But still, yeah. Kawhi in six, if not five. If he's available. So he'll be there. He'll be there. That, yeah, that's if yeah, he's available. I don't know if he'll, Kawhi can play. He'll be there. Until I see him play, I don't know yeah, if he can play. That's if he's available. He'll be there. With with Kawhi there, Morris, who you got? Dallas and seven. I, I don't okay. Know. Jack? They're going to just beat each other up. But I want to say a healthy Clippers is going to the Western Conference Finals. But depending on how the seeding plans out, it's just – it's such a if with the Clippers. You just never know. And for me, Luca, the Clippers. They are the yeah, Clippers. They're the Clippers. And <laughs> for me, Luca. Can he get to the NBA Finals with this squad? I don't know. You just, there's not a lot of defense in that backcourt. A Kyrie Luka backcourt is one of the more unique things we've ever seen on the offensive end. It's also not very good on the defensive end, and I don't think that team can go to an NBA Finals. But what I will say is Luka can single-handedly win a playoff series. We've seen it before. And the Clippers versus Luka Doncic is just popcorn every time. So I expect it to be a seven-game series, and it's just who gets the last laugh. And since you're on the subject of that, Ox, I just want to put it on your mind. Leonard wants nothing to do with Luca. Zero. You're crazy, Joe. He don't want nothing to he do with him. everything. Luka. No, he doesn't. No, he don't want nothing to do with him. I'm gonna see. I'm, t- I'm tired of you, Kawhi haters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Kawhi. When it's all said and done, he's gonna be in that like MJ, so sick, LeBron, Kobe. I'm so sick of you, Kawhi haters. He's, he's already ass. there, Mars. He's he's one. He's one. Exactly. Of there you go. Exactly. He's one of them. All right, y'all. And don't forget about Norman Powell too, bro. We've been waiting long enough. Time. We need that top 10. And I, I told I told my good friend Jack to put together two top 10s. Current players. I said I knew it was going to be something crazy with the current players thing. I knew it was going to be something we needed to hear. And all time. So, chat, which one do you guys want to hear first? Current or all time? Current. Let's start with the current. Let's start with the current. Okay. Current. okay. Are we going uh, one to ten, or are we going ten to one? Ten to one want? is always better. Ten to I, one is always ten to one is always better. Yeah. Ten to we one. We don't want to hear who's number one first. We want to right. suspense. Top ten current 
players in the NBA today. At 10, I have Kawhi Leonard. At nine, at nine, Shea Gilgis Alexander. At eight, Kevin Durant. At seven, LeBron James. At six, Nikola Jokic. At five, Joel Embiid. At four, Giannis Antetokounmpo. At three, <laughs> Luka Doncic. At two, Stephen Curry. And at one, Jason Tatum's the best player in the NBA, baby. <laughs> Jason Tatum is the best player in the NBA, baby. <laughs> I'm you, bro. This is what the best player in the NBA. It's all a build up. The last three years, it's all a build up to this point, and this is what it is. <laughs> Could you imagine if that you saw been, the list from one to ten? See how much? See how much better was that? You went ten to one. See how much better? That would have been perfect. That would have been perfect if you switched Kawhi and Luca. Other than that, I'm like, yo, I'm like, I would have the list in reverse order, low key. <laughs> one more time for the people that are lagging or that missed it, or whose internet went out from all ten right. to one. Kawhi at 10, SGA at 9, KD at 8, LeBron at 7, Jokic at 6, Embiid at 5, Antetokounmpo at 4, Luka at 3, Steph at 2, and Tatum at 1. Jason Tatum is the best player in the NBA as of today. <laughs> All right. That is his current list. Um, We don't have too much time to really dive into that. Yeah, we know must. why the list. We know why the list is ridiculous. Let's hear the all-time list. I can get you the all-time list. All right. All-time. I'm expecting to hear team. Jason Tatum at like seven. <laughs> There's no way Jason Tatum on this list right I'm about to. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yo, Jack. 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 Yo,
They're just better than him. He's with KG Lebron. and Scotty. Whoa. KG, I think Steph's like slightly above KG's table. You can't say Steph is with Scotty when okay, Steph yeah. is the closest thing to Michael can. Jordan that we've ever seen. No, he is not. <laughs> Why are you saying no, What does that even not. mean? Right, stop saying <laughs> that, please. Because no, he's he not. Both. He's no, not a gambling he's not. addict. Mm-hmm. They just play golf. <laughs> <laughs> no. They just play golf. That's the he's only similarity. The- he is not the closest thing to Michael Jordan that we have ever seen. Number one, he is not elite on both sides of the basketball like Jordan was. Number two, he was not right from the beginning when he walked in the door awesome like Jordan was. So, no, he is not. So, that's not true. That is just not true. In terms no, of the inspiration and, uh, and, and greatness and being able to literally be the only reason why LeBron James doesn't have 10 championships. Okay, he's not the reason why James doesn't have 10 championships. Him and... The guy who, even though he was the gatekeeper, the guy who jumped on his crew are the reason why they don't have 10 championships. Not him. Uh, and Clay. That's just an extra three. And Dre Bond. Right. And Andre Iguodala. Sean Livingston. Sean Livingston. was a good coach at that time. So why, so why, so why is LeBron Andrew Barbosa. Why is LeBron one? And, and Curry not one. Yeah. Because LeBron. You're about to make him put him one. I want him to. No, I didn't know because. Honestly, I was very close to doing it, and then LeBron beat him in the second round last year, and that's Steph where you beat him in the finals three times. I, yeah, the, the what's three... more important, second round or finals? Yo, Mars, I'm about to be off you. Quiet, no, Ron, no, no, no. sip it. Oh, oh, sip no, it, LeBron's the good. LeBron's the good because he beat Steph in the second round. Who cares that LeBron Steph beat him three times in the finals? Right. The record. By that, that logic, Jack. By that logic. Like, ooh, second Steph round series win. Ooh, right. Like, Which is why, also, you got him ahead of Magic Johnson. Which is he why you got him ahead of Magic Johnson, time. even though he doesn't have as many championships. And y'all are twisting my mind. Hold on. Help me here. Help no, me here. Here's the thing, Jack. I'm going to be honest. Have... If, if the, if there's no way LeBron's over Steph because of a second round series win, but Steph's beaten three times in the finals and swept him once. Well, could it be because he just beat him in the playoffs more, Mars? No. Oh, no. That makes sense, Mars. Well, I mean, it's 3-2 it's in the playoffs, right? To Steph. Yes. Steph unless yes. you yes. count yes. the yes. play in. I think a lot of people try and discredit some of Stephen Curry's championships because of Kevin Durant. But you don't. I don't. You you so play why is he not number one? Play the game. So why is he not number one? Because See, he he did not accomplish the greatness of LeBron James's greatness is because of the amount of time he was able to dominate from start to finish and being a 38 year old. And in my opinion, he could go. You know. San Antonio, go draft Bronny James, and you're telling me LeBron and Victor Webanyama at the end of LeBron's career and at the start of Vic's career, that's a championship right there. LeBron could go to Golden State. They'd win it right away. It's like LeBron is still LeBron, and his dominance was just so much longer than Steph's, but Steph's impact in the short period of time makes me believe that he's a top three guy because when he was in the league and dominating and finally figured out, he nobody's been able to stop Steph since he figured it out. So it's better to win four rings in 21 than four rings in, what, 15? I mean, they've won the same amount, and LeBron's played, what, six more years? You guys are trying to make me debate Steph versus LeBron. Damn. I'm, no. just, trying to, I'm just trying to, like, is it more impressive to win more, the same amount in less time or the same amount in more time? What's more impressive? I just try and respect LeBron James for what he's accomplished and not make it about just the four championships for LeBron. So but Steph you make about so Steph, so Steph make... beats him in the playoffs three times, sweeps him once, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But because Speaking LeBron played long, but because LeBron played longer, he number one. He but dominated. Also, he dominated and, longer. And yeah, also, dominated while losing, right? Correct. So this is all, <laughs> which, praise which, losing. <laughs> that's what it sounds like to me, Mars. And then turn around and, and say so because so because LeBron played seven more years while winning nothing in those seven years. That's why he's the greatest player ever. In which seven years? The first? The seven more no, years he's played than Steph. He just played seven more years. Or six Steph more years. How, the six more years or seven more years he's played than Steph because he played them and was mm-hmm. a very good player while losing every single time. That's why he's better than Steph. Right. Because of seasons he won nothing. In a lot of ways, what Steph did was very similar to what MJ did. Now, okay. LeBron was just the outlier and he played for 20 years and just dominated. And I don't think he just lose. I don't think he was losing. I think for was 12 years, not a single team in the Eastern Conference had any chance of getting to the finals. And then he would play Steph in the finals and lose. 
Yeah, that's the greatness of Stephen Curry. What do you want me to say? Am I? Am I? But Steph's great. So yes, that's what I want you to say. I'm not going to say that Stephen Curry is greater than LeBron James until Stephen Curry surpasses him and wins a fifth championship. And if they do it together. So if, so if the Warriors win this year, you got Steph as the good. Because now he's got more year? than LeBron. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah okay, that's, enough for that's enough for me. That's enough for me. Okay, <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. We go ahead. All right, so right. we, we got a couple more Super Chats that I got to get oh, to. Nice. Uh, before I do that, yo, Jack, tell the people where they can find you at and what you do best. Uh, my uh, Instagram is at Jack Cody one. My TikTok is at Jack Cody 30. Uh, I have a podcast where I just talk a lot about Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics and Stephen Curry and his greatness. It's called Imagine Sports. So make sure y'all go check that out. It's on all audio platforms right now. And we're, eventually one day it'll be on YouTube and that's the goal. But uh, for now, it's just on the Spotify, Apple podcasts. And we just crushing the clips, man. We crushing the clips. Uh, Adam West said, Ron, quit bringing up these TikTok guys. <laughs> well, Adam West, how about you go follow these TikTok guys? What's your TikTok again? Jack Cody, TikTok, Jack uh, Cody 30. That's what you, oh. you think they found. Me oh, at? 30. Mm, what a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> quit bringing up these TikTok guys. What do you think they found me at? <laughs> a few more super chats I'm going to read. SMN RNDM said, I changed my mind. He started talking about Luca. I like that. I think, guy. He, I, think he, I, think he, I think he sent another super chat changing his mind again, I think. And then he said, yeah, Never mind. Did. What the fuck? <laughs> this guy, go <laughs> this guy's gone. Back to not liking the guy. This is funny. He likes it for a couple minutes at least. Running circles. Crazy. Uh, Marcel Sanders said, "Yeah, Mars, I'm big on Paulo. Not Damo big, but I think as of now, his pace and passing is his best skill. He's been a point forward since the sixth grade when he played for the best AAU team out there, Seattle Rotary. LOL. Magic, get a true point guard. Help blossom." Yeah, I think his play, I think his playmaking is by far his best attribute. Like mm -hmm. by far, I think his his scoring leaves a lot to be desired right now. But he's twenty one, so give him time. But yeah, I'm very impressed by his passing. It's Hack Ira said, "Which active players do you guys feel are first ballot Hall of Famers?" I feel there's about fifteen to twenty guys, including like guys like Dame, Kyrie, Butler, etc. LeBron, okay. Steph, Chris Paul, Kevin Durant, um, Giannis. Giannis. Giannis, Jokic, Embiid would be first ballot. Um, Luca would be first ballot. Yeah, my whole top ten one. They're all James, first James, Har James Harden's the first James ballot. Harden's first ballot. Russell Westbrook's first ballot. Yep. Kawhi yep. Leonard is first ballot. Yep. Um, Kevin, did we say Kevin Durant? Yeah, from KD. Mm -hmm. um, Active players. Yeah, those are the guys that I'm thinking about. I think SGA might get it. <coughs> oh, Rudy Gobert. Not, not, as, of, not <laughs> as of now. <clears throat> not now, but just. Project. He will be, but today, if they retire today, those are the guys who are first ballot if they retire today. Rudy Gobert's the first ballot Hall of Famer, too. Is Kyle Lowry? No, I think he's the second ballot Hall of Famer. Paul George? Paul George might be first. If, if, if Grant Hill's the first ballot Hall of Famer, Paul George is, too. DeMar DeRozan? Yes. Uh, uh, who else we got? Who else we got? Mm -hmm. I can't think of other people. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all, I got one last super chat of the day from Scott Holder. He said that Colorado, et cetera, changed how he played, talking about Kobe. He said 2003, he had more joy. The way he moved was different. He was more in flow, took his time, probed for weak spots. I do, think, I do think 04 Kobe is just significantly worse than 03. I do think he was a worse player. So if you want to say that's because of Colorado, I wouldn't argue with you. I do think he was just clearly worse. That's where the Mamba mentality came from. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. Appreciate everybody who tapped in. Make sure you like the video on the way out. If you haven't become a member, become a member today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Be one mm -hmm. today. And also click that subscribe button. Shout out to everybody. Chill Town. Or no. Dub and JD. Oh, Anthony Rubio Davis. Sorry. Anthony today. Davis. First ballot. The chat's getting mad at us. Anthony Davis is first ballot. Mm -hmm. There you go. Sorry, chat. There you go. Mm -hmm. Playback.tv. Go there, join the Players' Choice room, and watch the Miami Heat versus the Dallas Mavericks today at 8.15 Eastern Time on Playback.tv. We'll be back the same time tomorrow with just about the same guys, better topics, better show, all that on the way tomorrow. We'll holler at y'all soon. Later. Merry Good to Christmas. see you. Yes, sir.